Could you imagine if I become like political and I'm like the alien ambassador, like for real? Because I a thousand percent should be and could be. Who do I talk to? Who who puts that person in charge? Joe Biden? Hey guys, it's Trish, and I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Oh, <laughs> I have never been prouder. Thank I you. I've never I, been prouder. I, I, know a little more Taylor Swift than maybe I've let on because I was like researching and I was like, okay, yes, T-Swift. T-Swift era. This is a T-Swift episode. If you don't like T-Swift, um, watch the first hour because we'll do the second hour because I don't know. I feel like I I could go either way. Like, I don't know much about Taylor Swift, but we're dressed as Taylor Swift because she's here for what, five nights in LA right now? Six. Six? Mm-hmm. At what stadium? Sofi? Uh, yeah, at the Sofi. Sofi? Sofi? Sofi and Sofi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. The weekend performed there. People hate, by the way, that you bring up the Taylor Swift and I bring up the weekend. They're like, stop. That's our toxic <laughs> trait. But that's like, we can't help it. I know, so. I know. <laughs> um, but Taylor Swift is here in LA for six nights. Sold out? Did she sell out? Do we know? It's sold out, yeah. It's been impossible to get tickets. But you have, you're going two nights. I'm going two nights, wow. yeah. I used to be able to do like every night in LA, but I'm a little bit older now. So every I think night you would have gone? But now it's like a, a respectable two a respectable two yeah. times you hit 30 mm-hmm. and that's when the time to go to two and have six yeah yeah mm-hmm. but this is just trish and taylor and oscar trishler trishler <laughs> that's cute i like that t squared do you know what my cosplay you is need to calm down you need need to to calm do, which down. i heard is Swifties don't come for me. I actually like the song, but I heard it wasn't like her most popular. Like people were not like loving this song. No, it wasn't her most popular for sure. But gay rights, we love to celebrate. Is that it. what it's about? Yes, the oh. whole. <laughs> I watched the video. What? I thought it was to like haters, the like calm down thing, haters. <laughs> no, the whole thing is like she talks about cliche never made anybody less gay. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, I love that. Okay. That's why I had a feeling when I was oh. thinking about what era you're gonna be. And like all the music videos, I was thinking you need to calm down because I'm like, that is very um, Trish coded, like LGBT rights. Yeah. Oh, like, I love that. I picked it's the gay pink, rights song. Gay rights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really just Googled Taylor Swift pink. And the only other pink outfit she really wore was the <laughs> one where they're like with the umbrellas and they're like dancing. Oh, yes. And the meme music video. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, pastel pink's not my thing. I'm more of a hot pink. And she yeah. had this fur coat and these earrings and this like martini. And she was like burning like a trailer. Whose trailer was that behind her? That was just her. Like, was it that was, the straighties? Was, yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that was symbolic of the straight. So yeah, what, 100%. What was it supposed to be? It was just supposed to be her trailer. Like, it was just kind oh, of a vibe. She's yeah. burning her own trailer? Yeah. Love that. Should I pose for the thumbnail real quick and then yeah. I can... How do I do? Like, what's a good thumbnail? Like... <gasps> a little... Yeah, a shocked is always good. Like, a uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep it in the video, I think. <laughs> I love it. Please do. <laughs> Does that... Is it, what is this? Is this good? Should I drink some? That's sugary. That's sugary. Let's just go into it because Taylor Swift has been in the news that I've seen, actually. Let me take out this glass because honestly, I have really good glam. I, I couldn't do the Taylor Swift. I'm okay. She had a little bit of a vintage bang in the yeah, video. Yeah, I remember. I can't pull it off. I have a big forehead. I have a big head. Taylor's very dainty and beautiful. <laughs> I have big heads, big things. I was like, let's just, also my facial features aren't like her. She has really beautiful lips. Like if I were to put like red on my lips, I would literally look like crazy. So I just went with like Taylor vibes. I put blue eyeshadow to represent the blue sunglasses. Like I was going with the with the vibe. You look great. We didn't even say yours. Yours oh, is what I'm, era are you? I'm reputation. It's it was very much like what I ordered online versus what came in the mail. Um, this it's supposed looks like to be her. from her reputation tour. It's okay. like a little romper. My real costume though, it didn't come into it comes today, ironically. Uh, like, oh my god. But so I'm just gonna have to wear it like yeah, randomly. Wear it the one next week. episode. Mm-hmm. Why not? It's yeah. gonna be tailored for like a week, I think, for you. Yeah, so that's true. I might just as well. Always, are you gonna wear this to the concert or the rep I one? The other one, the reputation. With the R E P. Yes. I, what was that era? Reputation. She's like a bad reputation. Yeah, that was when she got canceled. Oh, that was her comeback after cancellation. What did she get canceled for? What did Taylor Swift get canceled oh my, for? She, we have to get into that. We'll get into no that part. No way, that. she's canceled. She was can't not anymore, but she did have a canceled era, oh as all God. as all baddies do. I love that. Okay, <laughs> bad reputation. She's like, I don't give a damn about my bad reputation. But yeah, she, we'll talk about the news with her first, I guess. Yes, yeah, yes. She, okay, her okay, good reputation. Yes, yes, great reputation, great yes. karma. Hundred thousand dollar bonuses to her truck drivers. Yeah. She's given out five million dollars and bonuses yeah. this tour that's amazing but she probably made five billion or something she right she probably made a ton of money yeah. but i feel like it's really rare to hear about artists doing that much for the crew and the people behind the scenes of the tour and there are some people on x slash twitter whatever that were like <laughs> okay but she can do so much more well yeah but no one is even doing you know i hate when people say too. that it's like that's 
that's that's more than a lot of people would do. Can't you we know just what celebrate mean? something good yes. without like asking for? Especially in this world, everything's canceled. Everyone's awful. Like it's like it's nice that she's doing anything. And I'm sure those I know those bus drivers appreciate. My yeah. mom was a bus driver. She was a bus driver for the Olympics. I think they paid her eight dollars an hour. Maybe oh maybe like twelve dollars. This was like 2016. After I have to get the accurate information. I I want to say eight. Whenever the Winter Olympics were in Canada, she was a bus driver for it, and um, it was like cold conditions, like icy roads, like the, just the worst conditions. So I know when anyone would even tip her. I think even back in the Olympics, no one really tipped. But when they did, you know, she did party buses. I know it was like, it meant the world to her. Like it was life changing for us, you know? So a hundred thousand dollars. Is like it would be life changing to me. I'd take yeah. hundred thousand. I would love a hundred thousand dollars. Especially when people are getting those jobs, like they're getting, they go into it knowing that the rate and not really expecting anything more. Yeah. You know, like maybe just having a good working environment is like right. the only thing you could really like, hope nice. for. Yeah. yeah, her dad gave surprised them all with um, the checks and handwritten notes from Taylor, like thanking them. Wow, which is just so sweet. I yeah. love that and handwritten too. And it's her dad that did. I think that's. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. And I think that's like yeah, such a big deal. And the fact that's five million dollar in bonuses i mean that's a lot it's a lot of money you no know? it's yeah. crazy and but bus drivers keep you safe I'm, again i had to go out for the bus drivers my mom's been a bus driver since i was like a little girl and honestly like they keep you safe and they do a good job they have to drive through the night like it's a lot and sometimes they have to sleep in buses like my mom didn't get hotel rooms every night for the olympics and it's just like one of those things so good job taylor treating the bus drivers bus drivers they work hard my mom had to do three jobs she was like a teacher's aide a bartender and a bus driver all at once and it's a lot you have to stay awake and not easy feet i mm-hmm. love that for her so much that's amazing and the air is tour though has to be making oh yeah it's making so much money and uh everywhere that she goes the economy in all the cities like skyrockets because people are like buying hotels and eating around there oh, so yeah. it's so wild like what she's doing for the economy uh, like i love i mean it's the summer speaking i know we're like so feminist here on this podcast but i think it's the summer of like females like beyonce's tour is crazy is beyonce here this weekend no she's here se- september i think okay yeah because beyonce's everywhere like everyone's just who else was a big female on tour this summer pink was swimming in australia oh. i just know that because she was like flipping in the air and i was like oh, what is she doing i love that she's still i mean she has to be like in her 40s that's amazing <laughs> we're just saying 40s is like the new 30s i know so many people who just turned 40 i'm like god you guys look great i'm so excited because i love being in my 30s but 40s is that but i saw also emily ratatanowski yeah. Did you see her talk yes. about Taylor Swift? She had on, was it Troye Sivan? Troye Sivan, yeah. Oh my God, full circle. I know. Oh my, they probably can't talk about the idol though, huh? I don't think so. I think he's probably just talking about music. Oh. Yeah. I loved him in the idol. I thought that was so <laughs> yeah, good. I know. Everything goes can back I to the idol. the idol if I'm you not can, in it? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I live. I just ordered a t-shirt. I mean, this is, anyways, love it. But um, she was saying she, this, I think we talked about this. I don't know if it like was in the last episode or not, but about being misogynistic. If you don't like a woman, you're misogynistic. Yeah. What do you think? Because you're so ultra feminist. Do you think that's like a thing? I think it's it's fair to not like a woman for certain things, like if they actually are a bad person, you know, but I think what Emily was talking about specifically is that we're taught that it's cool to hate women and to like belittle the people who like her just because she's like super feminine. It's kind of like Barbie too, actually, like right. because it's just like so feminine and it's about like feelings and stuff that's just stereotypical with like girlhood. It's like cool to hate on her. And that Barbie was the a, movie or Barbie the toy and movie. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah I get you. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was interesting because like I, I told you, I was like, I was called misogynistic once on, and they weren't saying it mean. They're like, no, it's internal misogyny. Yeah. I was like, but I don't think I'm misogynistic for not liking Meghan Markle or something, you know. But I think if you're like, don't know, like I just don't know the Taylor Swift like fandom. Like I don't know her song, but I don't think that like makes me misogynistic. No, I think there's like there's differences for sure, and it, again, it's yeah. like so complicated, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, I think like if you're just like say you don't really know much about Taylor, you don't listen to her music, you're not right. really giving her a chance, and then you're just hating on her because she's like a woman who writes about her relationships that's what i hear all the time totally yeah you know i hate that like the one thing i know about her is like when they're like um oh don't date taylor because she'll write a song about you and yeah. she's like, don't do bad shit like and that's i felt too i used to be an exp- i wasn't trust me not the talent of taylor but i think that's like the talentless version of taylor Swift, where i would like talk about each of my relationships yes. and they're like oh my god like and everyone i've dated most everybody anyone i get into anything i'm sure you every any guy they're like be careful trish will do this like literally like 10 years later of me not exposing anybody and i was just like but don't do bad shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to say uh, mine was always in the right, but I think there was a lot of times where I was in the right where people were just like, wow, you're being dramatic. And I was like, but no, they like pushed me. You know what See, I mean? That's why, and that's why I've always resonated with you and Taylor really from the beginning, because that was how I felt too. It was like, if someone's going to treat, is going to do something badly, then a, I should have the right to talk about it. And then you grow up and you realize like, you know, when to, when to say something, when not to, but like at the time it's like, when you feel wrong, it's like, you just want that vindication. And I feel like I went through that phase. Taylor went through that phase. You went through that phase. Yes. And Mm -hmm. which is why I say like when 
they date young women or whatever, and then they're like surprised when these women or or men, whatever, and they they're surprised when they like call them out. I'm like, they're young, they're gonna feel hurt, like they're gonna feel whatever, like of course. And I, honestly, I don't think they're like in the wrong. Just young people will feel hurt and slighted or manipulated, and then they grow up and they're like, damn, that was like wrong. But they want to get it out in some way, and they just don't know how to get it out. Me, I I didn't know how to get it out until I was like 32. I was like, okay, let me just like handle this offline. Yeah. But it's so it almost gives you like freeing like validation to like get it out and people like yeah that's right like they treated you bad you know like I don't know but I know Taylor got a lot of that heat for that and I was just like let her be it's we can talk about this later but because we have we'll get to it at the end (laughs) but especially the John Mayer bullshit like I'm just like I'm sorry that's 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 just gross like you're 18 and you're like not on her part but on the third like what was he over in his 30s 30s yeah like you have no business dating someone who's 18 or 19 or 20 for that instance like I think that's so ick and I when people finally like Demi Lovato like now she wrote a song about what was it Wilmer Mm -hmm. where was it she were 20 18 17 and 29 there's like a song she's like 17 20 whatever yeah and I think that's so good because finally like realize and I don't I don't hold that against them because it makes you look at everything different because again we were growing up and and it was just a different like cultural thing you know like we didn't really think about like girlhood and like womanhood and that kind of stuff too it just yeah. was like very normal i guess in a sick way and then now it's like you look at everything different and yeah. that's why it's cool with like the taylor's versions again we'll get into it but yes. just being able to like look at that time through like the lens of what we know now you know totally. and like how we see the world differently when it comes to yeah like i think just stuff. everything too and like her being called crazy or dramatic i think the blank space one where she's like um she's just talk about being crazy in there mm-hmm. there's like a line i used to relate to that song because i was like oh yeah that's so me but it's like we're not actually crazy it's like these guys that make us feel crazy you yeah. know what i mean i don't know her situation fully but um <laughs> anyways we have to talk about lizzo yeah right so artists that, good reputation now <laughs> oh, oh no. bad reputation and lizzo was like america's sweetheart yeah this i don't know really... much about lizzo either i don't i don't know i never i never got into it I, I just don't know the music that well i just know she was like really popular on tiktok but she's body shaming her dancers allegedly allegedly <laughs> yeah. no as statement. of right now we have not heard anything from lizzo replying to the allegations or the lawsuit so we don't have anything from the other side we just have the actual lawsuit the and lawsuit and dancers who are not involved with the mm-hmm. lawsuit also co-signing yes. this yes kind of like Lizzo like again I don't know anything about her but like when you're in this power position like how how are you gonna I don't know I I know know. it's very weird so basically like the lawsuit is full of accusations against Lizzo and her dance captain and all the accusations are relating to like sexual harassment and creating like a hostile working environment and the dance captain came out yesterday and said some she just said she just was saying God is good and she was just talking about how good God is girl like I hate when people use God I hate when as a Christian, okay, as someone who grew up Christian and, like, I, I have Christian Jewish, I, I feel like I'm interfaith with a lot of faiths. Like, I hate when people use God as, like, a weapon or as, like, a thing to, like, be, like, I'm the good one. Like, I'm this. You know, I, don't, I saw her thing and it, like, infuriated me. I'm like, don't – don't say God is good right now when the situation's happening. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can say that to yourself, but to say that out, to, what did she say? Like, the truth, like, I don't know what she, her whole statement was. I was watching it, and it was just, she was going on and on in circles, just trying to, like, be ultra positive. And yeah, you're right. When you kind of weaponize that, when you kind of use God as defense, you know, it's like, make yourself look, ho- like, holier. When you're in the middle of, like, a big controversy. Yeah. No, when other like, people are hurting, and you're like, yeah. God's so good. It's like, there's, there's some people that are hurting right now through yeah. this. Like, Especially maybe. Especially before hearing anything from Lizzo like why would you go out and is she say, the current dance captain yes this is a current one and I know Lizzo probably like obviously like needs to like watch what she says because of like legal issues I'm sure like but if it was me and if those allegations were true like I would vehemently deny it you know what I mean I would issue like a statement like, right away when, you know and we've seen that with people when allegations are false they're quick to be like these are false this is not yeah. what it is but when it's true we don't hear from them there's accusations against Lizzo and then against the dance captain Though the ones against Lizzo are she's accused of overworking her dancers and making the group an excruciating 12-hour rehearsal. She was accused of making, quote, thinly veiled comment uh, relating to dancers' weight gain. Lizzo made the mm-hmm. weight gain? Okay, that's what I was confused. So she said something to a dancer. She about was like – weight, Yeah, about them gaining weight. And was, then, it, was it in regards to health? Did I see that or is that wrong? Like – or she just said you gained weight. Gained weight. And yeah. then did she fire them or she's just saying that? They ended them? up being fired, yeah. <gasps> um, not because of the weight gain, but because um they recorded a meeting. Oh my god, but could you imagine? I think that's maybe the most shock. I don't know. There's I a guess, lot of shocking yeah. things. But she's Lizzo body, body shaming. shaming. Yeah. 
Could also, you imagine? That's like me being like, oh, you look fat today. Like, what? When your whole brand is about, like, body acceptance and, like, celebrating yeah. all sizes. She had, a, like, a show called Big Girl. So it's like... <laughs> Wait, what was the show? It was, like, uh, it was on Max. It was, was it? A, it was, like, a dance competition. I had one of Lizzo's dancers in my videos before she was a Lizzo dancer. Courtney is her name. She was in my Thick Girls video, or Thick video. And then she went on tour with Lizzo, and I was like, wow, it's amazing. And I always loved having the Thick dancers. I always thought that's, like, so – because they're so good. They're so talented. And they get overlooked because of being, like, thicker. People always want, like, the skinnies. Yeah. We're talking about the Trisha Vaughn. So I always love that Lizzo did that. Like, again, I don't really, like, follow her, but I always love that she had them on tour with her and stuff. But hearing this is, like, so – jar i just i'm shook i'm just so shook because as a fat person who i think she's been fat for as long as she's been famous right yeah. same i've been fat my whole life and getting fatter every day but like it's like i would to, to say someone else is fat is like that's why it was hard to believe all this at first because you know people file lawsuits that are wrong all the time yes. and this one was just so it's so like dramatic and so against everything that you think lizzo is so i was like Liz was going to deny this right now. Like, it's going to be, you know, I'm sure it's going to be fake, but... It broke so, my heart. I'm not even a yeah. Lizzo fan, and I'm just, like, crushed by that. Like, to, to hear someone tell me I, tell me I've gained weight, especially, like, a woman. Like, I've heard it from guys, but, like, or the internet, of course, but, like, a woman, like, that I'm, like, working for as, like, a, a big dancer. I'm, like, oh, well, I can't fathom that. I would literally, I don't know, I'd, I would spiral. And it gets kind of worse, too, because she allegedly, she was accused of allegedly <laughs> coercing a dancer into touching a woman's breast at a strip club, at, despite the dancer not wanting to. And she was also accused of allegedly inviting her dancers to a nude cabaret bar without disclosing that it was nude. So that's the, where the sexual the harassment banana one comes too? in. I think she would want the dancers to get the bananas out of the performer or strippers' vaginas, which is crazy. Okay, so much. Okay, so in one breath, Lizzo's the one who kind of like criticized them for having premarital sex, right? Um, or was that the dance captain? That, the dance captain. She, she, the dance captain is super religious. Right, so, she's yeah. the guy. She's the one trying to convert them to. Yeah. Okay, to and then she's. But then on the other hand, is the dance captain going to these strip clubs too? Like, I'm I so know, confused. I'm, it's very confusing, the whole situation. Oh my because, God. yeah, the dance captain is like very, obviously, like in her statement, was very religious, scolding people for having premarital sex, trying to convert them, and discussing masturbation and sexual fantasies with the group who allegedly the dance, dance captain. captain yeah was discussing your sexual fantasies with the group yeah what this is so so bizarre. weird and like yeah. it's so specific where it's like how could you make this up yeah but also like what is even happening and it this is where it's like so frustrating too because i feel like lizzo was pretty sex positive and then it's like then again once again making sex workers seem like deviant or sex positive people deviant you know what i mean and mm -hmm. i just like hate that part of it like i just I, and i don't grasp that part of it either like how are you in this day and age like one, I feel like strip clubs are outdated. I think if you go, if you're a stripper, like that's totally fine. Like I was a stripper, like I think that's fine. But I think they're like outdated anyways, where I feel like going there with like your friends is no longer like a social thing. You know what I yeah. mean? Like why should it be? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that's so weird. Also people you work with, like I think there's just like such a fine line. And I feel like for me, I've always kept people like at a distance for that reason, right? Like people you work with, you work with them. Like I just think there's like that fine, that, that really, not even a fine line. Like there should be a clear line. Like you don't go to strip clubs with your like employees. Yeah. I mean, you know? even in situations where where it's like you're friendly with someone you work for, like I would never do that either. You know what I mean? Like, I know <laughs> it's, it's, it is hard. It is hard, but that kind of situation and that so specific and so and how many girls? Three dancers three came dancers out so far. Yeah, and in, in the lawsuit, in the lawsuit, yeah. the former dance captain has come out in support. Another dancer has come out in support. Yeah, a director who worked who was supposed to work with Lizzo in 2019, but then quit. Also came out and said what? Um, she said I was treated with such disrespect by her. I witnessed how arrogant, self centered, and unkind she is. Mm. Which is, again, is very anti the Lizzo brand. Yeah. Which is like the biggest, Ugh. the biggest thing. That's, I mean, it's my least favorite thing when I hear celebrities are just like arrogant and rude to people. Yeah. And like, especially that kind of stuff too. And using, again, power dynamic, which I, this goes to like flips it the other way, right? It's like if it was a guy doing this, like, could you imagine? God. Like, but a girl, I think it does. And that's why there is that double standard. And that's why it's like I get so wrapped up with like feminism and misogyny. It's like, you know, on one hand, we don't want to like just throw women under the bus. But it's like this is also very severe just because it's a woman doing it to another woman. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't. And it's so it can be traumatic. And again, I hate power dynamics like this. I hate power dynamics where it's like a celebrity or like a person in, like paying you and then the person getting paid. It's like you feel pressured to do stuff and it goes against you and then you feel icky about it. And I've been in that situation where it's like, oh, man, I was pressured to do something. 
something and now I feel icky. And you and to this day, there are still I have like flashbacks. I have traumatic experiences of stuff that I did at the time because I was like, well, this gets views and this is whatever. And then you just like are so you have this like disgusting feeling of the rest of your life. Yeah. Because you feel pressured or pushed into something. And I hate that. It's just all so weird too because it's not like she was an overnight success. Like she was singing and performing for a long time before. She used to do the music in Drag Race. Like before she was Lizzo, she would do like the musical songs for Drag Race. Yeah. So she was like, it took her a a while to like have her big moment. Yeah. Um, And she, so she's someone who's like been in the industry and had to like work her way up. Mm. So you would think that someone who's like, again, it's all alleged and we don't know for sure, but if it's true, like you would think that someone who like had that come up and like had to work and was at the bottom and had to fight their way to the top would have like that respect for other people in the industry who are not like, you know, top level. Totally. And kind of just like make a living. Or being grateful to like a director that wants to work with you or even. My dancers, I'm telling you why, like every dancer, I'm sure they can all attest to this and that's not whatever, me patting my back, but like every single dancer that's my music video, I literally am like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I like always, and this is like, it's not getting at me, but whatever. I always pay them more than like, we always have a budget in our budget for them. Like they get paid like a certain amount, which dancers are always the lowest paid mm-hmm. in anything. I always give them extra out of my own pocket. I always write checks out to each of them always because like one, I'm like happy anybody wants to work with me back then or now or whatever. <laughs> like I just think that's like so nice. Dancers are so freaking talented. They put in the most work. They put in the most like effort. Effort. And then, like, they just get paid the worst. and But they also ho- always have a smile. None of my dancers, literally no one ever complained, nothing. Like, they always have smiles on their faces. So I always, like, over and overcompensate them. And then over also overly thank them. Like, oh, my gosh, you want to be in my music video? Like, this is, like, this is crazy. You've danced with, like, and people have danced with Michael Jackson's been in my music video, all this stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, thank you for making this video. So, like, to be... Not only to them, but to the director to be like arrogant. I'm like, oh my God, if anybody wants to work with you, you wanting to work with me, I'm like, wow, it's so amazing. Someone yeah. wants to work with me. You know what I mean? I just, I don't understand that concept ever, especially when you're making money and Lizzo's making a lot of money. For me, even making like a probably a, a percent, like a thousand percent of what Lizzo makes, I'm just like so thankful. This is my job. So, like, to work your way up and to be so like ungrateful, like allegedly with that director, like, it's just, it's just frustrating. And like, how are you not saying something so quick about this when you're like all about body positivity, all about, you know, fat feminism i would think yeah. well last week too i saw this video of a little girl at her concert who held up who she was holding up a sign um and lizzo brought her on stage and she said you help me feel okay even if i'm getting bullied at school and lizzo had like a whole speech about like not bullying people and being like empowering to other people this was literally last and i remember watching it was like that is like such a beautiful message and i was like i was so touched by it and then like reading all this and like oh, it's this. a shock it's yeah. a shock I mean something similar was said to me too to my face like your body's amazing I would never think anything bad about your body and then to like hear them making fun of your body you're just like it's such a hard thing to yeah. process like just don't say anything if what you're you a think hater of finding out that what you think about someone is not how they actually are is like the most mind bending yes. thing I think that's true and I think there's a lot of people who like I hate her shop I feel like I'm like a really nice person you know when I hear this stuff I'm just like how are these even humans? Like, I just feel like these people are like, I don't get it. I don't get the arrogance, especially someone bigger. Like, I think automatically, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'll just speak for myself, but I have automatically this insecurity in me where I just yes. feel lesser than everybody. Yes. So to be that, like that arrogant and then to tell someone they've gained weight when you're already big and everyone makes fun of you and she always talks about people who like come for her for her weight. It's like, how are you going to in the same breath do that to someone, you know, especially when it's not out of like, re- like I've in the past on average retaliation, like, like once or twice. And it's like, it, it's icky. I hate that feeling. And never to a woman. Oh my gosh, never to a woman. But either way, it's not right. Cause like the weight is such a touchy issue, but I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm like, wow. Like beyond, even Beyonce, like uh, in the, in her, uh, you can't break my soul remix. She shouts out Lizzo. She shouts out a whole bunch of women, but Lizzo's in there. And when she performed it last night, she skipped Lizzo in the song, yee. which is when telling when Beyonce is like, <laughs> he's like, you're out. <laughs> Yeah, oh so God. the fact that even Beyonce is, like, moving around this whole thing, too, it, like, doesn't make it look good. It really doesn't. <sighs> I know. I just think her not saying something when she's so active on social media. Like, yeah. she's, like, usually – like, Ariana was the, so quick to be, like, don't talk about my body weight, you know? Yeah. But then this is, like, silence. Like, I think that's just so telling. Because even if it's, like, for legal reasons, right, there's a legal matter going on, you can say, like, this is absolutely not true, you know, Bust if it's out the not ukulele, true. Lizzo, the flute, whatever you got to do, girl. <laughs> What's with the flute? I keep seeing that. Is that her That's her, her apology? thing. She plays, like, the flute <laughs> – professionally i'm like going back to double check that she, there hasn't been any uh like updates because i feel like every time we talk about yeah, this yeah no literally tomorrow no there update. will be there will be one as soon as this airs 
I I hope it's not true, but also I, you know, it's so specific and there's enough people. I feel like if there's enough like people talking about it, it's not like one, two, you know. Yeah, the fact that it's the three women lawsuit and then there's other people coming out and like support, even just like a character or witnesses or whatever, makes me very nervous for Lizzo. Yeah. Oh man. I'm I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken for like just all the people that are fans of her too. Cause like when you think someone stands for something, you're like, is anything yeah. real anymore? Does anyone actually feel body positive? You know? Like thinking about that little girl who just felt so empowered by Lizzo and then like this. having she finds out about all this and if it's true like that is so sad uh, do we know how long I mean kind of been that long ago do we know when these like allegedly happened I don't um, know what the timeline was actually probably, yeah I guess it doesn't really matter yeah. but probably within the past few years right Lizzo's only been oh yeah because the show because a lot of it came from the big girl show and that um came out last year did she so. get her dancers from that or i think so i think it was like a competition to oh, get i love that dancers. it's yeah. actually so hard to find um big girl dancers like when i was doing thick like it was actually so hard we ended up having a guy which i loved i should have had a guy in the first place anyways but um there was just like not a lot of big girl dancers yeah which is like crazy you think there would be more i guess now maybe because of lizzo there is because they're all very talented beyonce has i think of the toys right now too there's like a lot of good body diversity thing like taylor has a plus size a male dancer and beyonce oh. has like diff- um she has, beyonce has a whole bunch of different size dancers really too. Mm-hmm. oh that's amazing i yeah. didn't know i keep seeing her on tiktok i think it's blue blue oh yeah blue comes yeah, out yeah like doing her little yeah. dance i was like she's so grown i feel like beyonce I know, just had a baby so big. Oh, my, i, I kind of love that though oh my god i always like envision i don't know i don't know what malibu would be doing with me i guess this <laughs> I don't know what I could do her, but I love the idea that I would love to bring her on stage and just like dance. She'll probably be fierce. She'll be on the talk show, on the TV show. Yeah, Yeah. totally. She'll be my (laughs) co-host. I mean, kind of live for that. Oh, Lizzo. I hope. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know. We'll see, but we'll be following the story closely (laughs) because we're journalists. Yes, journalists. You said I was a journalist as well. Yeah. Oh, the car- perfect transition. Okay, okay. The Cardi B. You guys, Trish was on the case when it came to finding <laughs> out about what was going on with Cardi B and the microphone. Like, Trish was on X. She was, was asking for context. She wanted eyewitness <laughs> statements. Like, she was really doing hardcore journalism. I know. I know. I get really into it. Now that I'm doing this, like, it's so, I don't know. I get so more invested. I think before I was very just like, I'm just not, I'm just minding my own business, which maybe like I should do eventually. <laughs> but for now, it's kind of fun just to have this like follow everything. So the Cardi B thing was crazy. So I don't follow her either. And again, I follow people just for context. I follow people like Donny Osmond and Britney Spears and like that's it. Dolly Parton maybe, you know. She comes out with cake mixes and I buy them. I think those are like really the only people. By the way, Britney, if you ever want to do an interview about your book and have like a real interview and like every, I would love to do it, you know. You could trust me because I love you, Britney, so much anyways. But um, I... I don't follow Cardi B, and but I like her. I think she's cool. When I've seen her, I'm always like, oh, she seems like a girl's girl. She seems fun. Like, you know, I don't know. She seems, right? I don't know. Is that my... It's very dicey with Cardi. Oh. I I kind of just say neutral, but there's a lot of stuff between, like, Nicki Minaj's barbs oh. and the Cardi B's. Um, Bard- Bardies? They're Bardies. Oh, my gosh. So, That's very close. Yeah. Barbs and Bardies. Bar- yeah. It's a very thin line between the two. I kind of like to stay neutral. Um, they don't but, like each other? No. Oh, Cardi- I think they did a song. Um, they did, but then they didn't... Go well after that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about Ice Spice? Where does she stand? Some people tell me I look like Ice Spice and I should do a cosplay of her. Oh my God. I've seen that. Did you see? There's a tick. Oh, I should find it. There's literally an Instagram that has like, I don't know, maybe like 500,000 likes on it. And it's like my face on Ice Spice, like during the I music live videos. for that. Yeah. I would live to do an Ice Spice uh, look. I love her with her curly hair. Yeah. You need to do an Ice is Spice she, look. Is she a Barb's or is she a Barbie? She's, so she's signed to Nikki's uh, label. Oh. So yeah, she's. She's uh, so she's a barb. A barb. Yeah. Okay, because they did the Barbie song together too. Yeah, Lizzo too. She's all over TikTok with that. When I wake I up, I love that. Song. I forgot about that. I love that song. <laughs> oh, no, I just In used it. In my own pink world. Oh, you oh sing my so god, so good. Stop it. Have you wanted to be a singer? I feel like that's like your. I, when I was, I was a choir when I was li- when I was little. Like Glee Club? <laughs> no, just choir. Oh, at the like church. church choir? Yeah. What'd you grow up as? Catholic. Can we ask? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what you can ask anymore. It is like I one know. of those things. You know, you don't want to like step. Okay, interesting. Yeah, the church Same. choir. Yeah. Peace. Be with you <laughs> and also with you i grew up catholic too it was like I, I had a chill experience growing up catholic you know people it gets a bad rep and i'm not saying like it's i don't know what it is now i don't go to church but um it wasn't like that awful was it about, yeah okay mm-hmm. i wonder because people a lot of like, gay people especially will be like you know our church yeah my family is like latinx i should say latinx. like they're kind of more traditional catholic but i never had a problem like my family is very accepting liberal about that stuff yeah yeah i feel I don't know. I feel like our church was always like that too. But again, I know there's like churches can be awful and they can try and convert you, but everyone's experience are different. But yeah, growing up, it wasn't like traumatizing at all. The Catholic church. Oh, ours was chill. We could wear like jeans and like a ponytail. We have like a dress code, but yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. But even like 
in especially in high school like it was very because i went to catholic high school too and it was like they were teaching like gay acceptance and stuff like that too yeah so oh, it was see, pretty again yeah. the five years is a big difference because uh, we definitely were not accepting and i that. think it's also like a because it's like la too you know so maybe that right they're a little more forward yeah because yeah, i feel like us like people are i remember teachers calling people gay to really? like insult them they'd be like wow don't be gay <laughs> i was like and I, I just say that all the time like it was weird that was like a word as like i don't know i did have, have one so much. Te- my one religion teacher in high school did ask me like oh do you you're not close with your dad huh and i was like no i am <gasps> oh and i didn't think anything of it and then like a couple of years later i was like wait a minute <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy no teachers teachers traumatized me and i'm not gonna get into that because the last the last podcast i'm talking about with teachers everyone's like don't talk about and i'm not saying all teachers but i'm telling you 95 percent of my teachers were problematic to me like traumatized me like 95 percent yeah like my whole life there can be a lot and that sounds like a lot too i know they're underpaid and i know like a lot of them are like i get it like that's that does suck but my particular school i feel like should have been shut down back then with the teachers the there's way they bad, treated us yeah there's some bad seat and well i guess in every industry of so course. yeah no it's like you have to be in an isolation bubble but cardi b i don't know much about her i know she now i i feel like i'm kind of scared of her like i don't i didn't know she was so <laughs> she, tough no she's like so she got into a fight with nikki minaj i think it was a met gala um Ooh, and then met gala? i think it was the met gala yeah and then nikki they got into like a physical fight and i think nikki threw her shoe at cardi and then um cardi came out of the met gala with like a big like knot above her eye it was pretty wild but she's very like she's pretty tough um, yeah, right. She like she, yeah. I'm not. I don't care. Like, yeah, she's scrappy. She, okay, yeah. I didn't know that about her. Yeah, she's very she scrappy. Like, um, like with her long nails, like she would just be kind of dainty. Yeah, you would. I think that's kind of the vibe she gives off. But I think now she is. Before, like in her come up, like she was always very. I don't scrappy. know if now she is. She's and, throwing microphones. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Now Which she's is like, like shocking for a number of reasons, but the number of reasons and same kind of thing with Lizzo. And I, I maybe this is the Taurus in me always think about money, but I'm like, when you have so much money, like how are you not able to like hold it back, knowing that like what is she? She's like a now allegedly bat- battery. She's like yeah, there, well, so there's a police report filed, but okay, the whole thing is okay. very weird. Okay, there's so many different camera angles, and I went through trying to like watch them all oh, to did. see what was going on because okay. I was mystified by it. Well, first of all, there's an epidemic of people throwing things during concerts. Yes, this is and annoying. I hate it because I feel like it's going to ruin. Yes. Po- like artists are going to start putting freaking plastic walls up or something mm-hmm. to stop people from throwing stuff. People don't know how to act anymore post quarantine like people forgot how to act in concerts i think yeah. so why why are people doing this like why are people throwing what did they throw what do they throw at harry like skittles people throw stuff at, yeah i i what feel like it, a lot of it came from the hair not because of harry himself but just because he's so like open and like friendly and stuff drake too he's always yeah, like Who's people throw bras, this? yeah but people would throw like chicken even in one direction days people would throw chicken nuggets at harry oh, but be now me. i feel like it escalated <laughs> I love that. I mean, I wouldn't be the one throwing nuggets, but I feel like at my, if I were to tour again, I'd want people to throw. No, I don't want them to throw nuggets. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm oh, no, fat. Okay. I had to get this off. Fat girl oh, hack. God. I was like putting the blanket in front of. No, it's not blanket. It's a thing. You know, I don't know. When you were bigger, did you ever put like pillows in front of you when you would like sit down? On oh the couch? yeah, because all of a sudden everything. That's me. Yeah. Right, my shoulders are back. You look great. Right. You have body dysmorphia. I think it's because like when you. I heard this. I don't know. I haven't lost a lot of weight, but I always hear when people lose a lot of weight, they like still think of themselves as like big. When I was that little, I did not think I was skinny at all i really? still thought it was huge yeah oh that's so, so it's like in yeah. your head or yeah something. and tra- the trauma of growing up fat yeah i mean like, I, that's why lizzo is so <laughs> i know, <laughs> you know? I, but that's what i'm saying like of all people who you just know you're treated worse just because you're fat <laughs> yeah. you're big or whatever like i saw someone else wait and it's like they're like skinny privilege is real like, i i was treated so much better as soon as i lost weight yeah, you know I what i mean yeah yeah, yeah she was, she was yeah. able to like, get like dates and stuff yeah mm-hmm. and she's like you know people are just nicer to you and like that's just the fact people just don't like fat people period but um it's it's, it's one of the most traumatizing things. Of course, I haven't like grown up in other people's skin. I'm not saying it's like the most traumatizing thing. But for me, I know it's definitely like I feel like a POS every day. For, I'm yeah, like, I'm it's done a number on it. I feel like I have to just tell people every time I do this, I just have to remind people, yes, I'm fat. Don't have to tell me in the comments. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sweating. So I took the thing off anyways. But we have Cardi B, Cardi B. who is not fat. She gets like light bulbs all the time. Yeah. I love she's, that she talks about it too. She's, she's like, snatched. Yeah, yeah she she's gets, snatched. The epidemic of throwing things on stage. So that's why when it right. happened – when Cardi like threw the microphone back, I was kind of like, okay, work because I feel like someone <laughs> yes. needs to do something. Like someone, you know, should be able to respond. What okay. did they throw on her? So before this happened, it was hot because she was performing in Vegas on a Saturday, like middle of the day, so it was hot. So she was like, oh, like throw water on my legs, like it's so hot to the fans. To the fans, yeah. Oh. Um, Wait, so, so br- oh, she asked. This was like before, and like people were just like splashing her legs, and then. And then it was a, a little bit late, like a, it was later in the song. So maybe a couple minutes. She went to the other side and she was starting to sing. 
And this girl took her cup and it had ice in it and everything and threw it like directly in her face. Cause she was, Cardi was also like leaning over towards like the audience when, when she threw the water. Ugh. And ugh, yeah. Ick. Oh, I would so, be pissed. Yeah. So, but again, when you're worth so much money, I mean, you kind of have to eat it, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to eat the money. True. And maybe she doesn't care. And the other angles, though, cause I, again, you try to research and you get the full context cause you're like, cause then I heard that she asked to be splashed or whatever. And I was like, oh, then maybe it was just like a misunderstanding. But then, Reading that it happened, it was like later on. Yeah. It wasn't like right when she asked. And not like throw it in someone's face. Someone, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw there was another angle where it was showing the girl right before she did it. And the girl, in her eyes, she just looked like she was up to something. Like she was like. The girl who threw the water. Mm-hmm. And you could hear someone in the background say, do it. And then that's when she did it, when she threw the water. And then it, the camera sh- showed Cardi. And then she would like, it was right before she threw the microphone. Uh-huh. And then back to the girl, she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And well, then she did it. Yes. And then that's when Cardi whacked her. Oof, well, at least she said sorry. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> yeah, scared. Was like, yeah. I, <laughs> did she hit her? I thought she hit someone else next to her. Or did I, it ricochet? I think it ricocheted because I think I, def- I saw it make contact with the girl. Yeah, because I was like, wow, good aim. Like, that's yeah. amazing. And, but it did bounce. Uh, the other angle I saw, the mic did bounce Ooh. and go somewhere else. But yeah. <sighs> it's so annoying. It's so annoying, too. Like, this, I heard this all the time. Like, not all the time, but you hear about people who like break into someone's house and then they like fall on a knife and, and sue then, the people yes. that like. <laughs> so frustrating when someone's like clearly in the wrong and then you end up having to like get in trouble for it yeah. i don't know so they um uh, the concert goer did file the police report um for battery but not like no arrest or even a citation has been oh. uh made what so i mean anyone can just file a report and then they, they don't have to do anything about yeah, it yeah because if it's especially because there's so much evidence there's so many camera angles that she you know through the first stone basically like, right actually, right you know? <laughs> literally so i wonder like, if she could still sue her maybe and i think there's pre-existing stuff against Cardi because she had an incident in a strip club. Uh, I forget what it was. And someone's going to come for me. But it was like an altercation with like a stripper. And she was... Female go- or male? A ma- uh, female. Mm. And she was going to court for that because the... Cause, so she had like other um, stuff on her record. So like, that's why people were like, oh, Cardi's going to get in trouble because she was just um, going through that. She had a prior. But, I didn't yeah. know she was so like hardcore like scrappy. this. She's scrappy. She's definitely scrappy. That's scrappy. That's a good word. Yeah. I mean, these strippers, like they just can't catch a break. Like leave the strippers alone. I know. Like I know. Like I hate that they get and thrown Cardi into this. used to be a stripper too. So it's like, Oh yeah. yeah. So what did she, you don't, well, we don't get yeah, into that. that but, was a whole. Yeah. But, uh, I mean. Yeah. So I don't know. I've, for this one, it might be controversial, but I'm like, I'm kind of pro Cardi. I feel like if you're going to, especially in a concert, like, I think people feel like they can get away with anything yeah. now. It's like they're just someone in the crowd. And I feel like people need to be, like, held. Granted, is violence always the answer? No. But bidding whack with a microphone, I'm like, don't throw shit <laughs> yeah, if you don't like, want shit thrown at you. Right. I mean, like, like in theory, I'm on Cardi's side. I'm like, yeah, like, they should do that. But it's also, like, you know, legally and, like, yeah. also, like... I mean, I guess you could just do the Miranda Lambert and just call them out and be like, don't do that. Yeah. Or I guess like be your ex is probably a good example because she actually like pressed charges against someone who threw uh, the phone at her head. And what? That guy said he just did it. What? Just because? Like he just, just wanted to like for, have fun? Yeah. I mean, what is wrong with people? Honestly, I mean, even before all this, and I make this all about me. I mean, it's just Trish. But you know what I mean? Like I just like <laughs> literally always didn't like live shows for that reason because I'm like, I crazy i don't know like i just and now they're throwing stuff it's like that's weird if i got thro- if something was thrown at me i would literally hide for the rest of my life i would like never see anyone i have such anxiety now but like if that ever happened to me i would literally never trust anyone and like people now when they say my name i literally get scared every time something comes up from behind me i might never come up from behind me never because it's just like i don't know all this stuff happening and these are fans these are fans throwing stuff at them like i don't know how these performers do it it does suck because i mean like live performing sounds like so much fun but i don't think i would ever do it again i don't trust anyone it's funny because kelly clarkson at her vegas show because she was performed at vegas like i think the next day or the same day that this happened and she was like if you're gonna throw anything at me it better be diamonds she better not say that <laughs> someone's gonna throw a big diamond at her or something like that it's like uh, i would love a vegas residency but i don't want to perform oh live <laughs> I was no audience <laughs> We'll just Just stream it or something like that. I would love Vegas. Like, that's like the dream is Vegas residency. That would be like so amazing. This kind of all ties into the Lana Del Rey prophecy, though. Right. Which is the wildest thing. Yeah, this is crazy. Well, also, what's with all the Lana Del Rey lately? Not that I like hate her, but like, I mean, she's everywhere again. Like Waffle House. (laughs) And we keep hearing about her. Is it? Why? I think she's just performing at different festivals right now. too. And she just released an album. But she's just kind of. How old is she? I don't know. I'm sorry to be about age, but I always want to know how old people are. She's 38. 
I thought oh. she was younger, but yeah. Wow. She, she looks, looks great. Good. She looks oh my good. God. I know. I always want to know people's age. Like, that's the first thing I like Google when we're watching a TV show. What we were watching the other day, and I was like, how old do you think he is? Who is it? Tim Allen. But yes, Lana Del Rey, she's everywhere. Yeah. And Maybe the, Lana could come on. I know. I feel like, she, why not? <laughs> but so she posted this Instagram post in 2020, and it was uh, the question for the culture letter. The open of the letter, she said, now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camila, Cardi B, Kehlani, and Nicki, Nicki Minaj and Beyonce have had number ones with songs about being sexy wearing no clothes effing cheating etc can i please go back to singing about being embodied feeling beautiful or being in love even if the relationship is not perfect um so what does that even mean so basically because <laughs> so her confusing. first few albums were very much like she kind of glamorized if you will like the power in it like kind of kind of like we were saying in the last episode of just being like the girl in a relationship and like having the guy be like strong and you know kind of the stereotypical like gender roles that's kind of what she was talking oh, about like she was like just being like i love being a princess taking care by basically a man. yeah oh. just kind of like she her songs were coming from like that perspective like traditional gender roles basically. we're reverting back to that now because everyone's like so with snow white everyone's like let's just, can we be <laughs> yes. saved by a prince we don't want to be so, empowered anymore yeah. that's what basically she was addressing and it wasn't didn't go over well at the time everyone was like especially because it was, it was all artists of color so it was like oh um, yeah it was looked at a little funny yeah yeah yeah. But, you're calling out like such specific people you could say like a genre. yeah but yeah. the weird thing now is that in the order that she's listed all these people, they've all had scandals or are going through something right now. Wow. Who are the names again? Okay. I didn't even recognize half so of them. The first I said one, Beyonce. I knew that. The first name was Doja Cat. And okay, we know as Doja. we've covered, friend of the show, <laughs> yeah. she was um, kind of canceled and she lost 500,000 followers. The next person she mentioned was Ariana Grande. And as we've also gone in the show. But she gained 500,000 followers. Yeah, Did you Ariana see that? Ariana gained followers, but she still, she was like going through it. There's, I don't think she know. was canceled. I honestly think I it like, made was... her more popular. She's coming out with Pink Cloud. And I was like, I want to get that August 13th. Me too. I was like, I want to smell it's it. It's beautiful. We could put it on this little thing right here. <laughs> and everyone's like, I want that perfume. I, like, I love all of Ariana's I fragrances. Know. I get them too. Yeah. And I'm just like, how is that possible? How did that make her... <laughs> Oh, gosh. I don't I mean, know. It, from a PR perspective, it was a bit of a, a mess, though. Yeah. Kinda, so we can kind of... Yeah. I mean, I still want to see Wicked. I kind of want to see Wicked even more now because I'm just like, this Ethan Slater is all over my For You page as SpongeBob where he's just like, ha ah! <laughs> like doing that SpongeBob laugh. And I'm like, what? And it, is it selling you on Wicked or... Yeah, yeah think- I think so. I know. <laughs> I, it's so bad because I feel like that is the ickiest situation. But then the pink cloud comes out. And I'm like, I don't want that pink cloud. Like, <laughs> the goddess again. I know. The How? Isn't that... Okay. It's just... And she knows this. She knows she's perfect and pretty and everyone loves her. And it's just like, I don't know. Well, see, at least. But she's canceled, but, I guess, in a or way. Or at least in a controversy. In a controversy, we'll say. Yeah. Um, And then Camila Cabello. This was kind of like light, but um, <laughs> there was rumors about her dating Rosalia's ex. And it was like the day after they announced their breakup. Who? Rosalia? Rosalia, yeah. She's a uh, Latin singer. And Rosalia. she was dating another... Um, is she related to Crystalia? <laughs> Rosalia is just her full. Rosalia. Yeah. Rose, that's pretty. Can she come on the podcast? <laughs> she, maybe. Does she sing? Um, What kind of songs does she sing? Like what like famous song would I know? I don't know which one you would know. Uh, the one, she... My favorite song by her is called Chicken Teriyaki. Oh. Oh. Chicken Teriyaki. Yeah. Okay. Love um, that. <laughs> <laughs> I live for that. But you'll learn a little Spanish <laughs> when you listen to her, I guess. Okay. So I love that she's singing in Spanish about Chicken Teriyaki. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty that's iconic. everything. Yeah. I love that. Uh, but she sounds pretty. Camila was. What did she get? Can- oh, oh no, Camila. Yeah, because oh. everyone loved it. Was she was dating an, uh Raul Alejandro? I hope I pronounced mm. his first sounds name. Sounds hot. Right. Um, like the and name they were like sounds a, hot. They were like a Latin music power couple. Okay. You know, like everyone loved them together. I think they were engaged. Maybe it was one of those couples you wanted them to just be together. You know, right? So then they broke up, and then the next day there was rumors that Camila was dating <gasps> um, Rosalie. Why is ex. that tea though? Are they friends or just no? But it's just. It, it, not a good look because they just got out of the relationship and a lot of people love Rosalia. I feel like it's a lot of internal misogyny for Camila Cabe. I don't that's know very, her, but she is, gets paid. That is, well, there's other stuff like too. Like the Christmas thing. Everyone was like Christmas or whatever. Christmas. 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 Yeah, yeah. I was like, Girl. A lot of people do not like Camila. That's true. So people were like I think looking for it's just for like a little hater. And she dated that Sean Mendez, right? Yeah, she did shake Sean Mendez. I think those people are just haters. But it so, is, regardless, as the prophecy, it still kind of counts in my book. I think. Okay, okay. And then the next one is that. Cardi B, which we just <laughs> Yeah, just, but I feel also Cardi B doesn't care. She's like, I'll throw another true. microphone. She threw two. So she's like, I'll, you know what? I'll throw a oh, third. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. The microphone is now being auctioned for charity. for, And it's, the bid right now is $30,000. Oh, 
Yeah. It could go higher, I should think. I think it will. I think yeah. that was just heard this Who morning. Who had it? The DJ? Who got the microphone? I, I think the DJ, or maybe va- the, the club. I would monetize it. I mean, unfortunately, like if that's like an unfortunate situation, I don't want to get hit by a microphone. But like if it <laughs> happened, I'd probably just be so, like, let me try and sell this or yeah, something. Yeah, why not? Make it good. And then the next person that um, Lana listed was Nicki Minaj. She didn't get canceled or anything, but her house got swatted, which is really scary. Was she like live or something? No, but someone called 911 and said there was a shooting at her house and the uh, police came. Yeah, that swatting stuff is so, so ick. Yeah, That's terrible. like a huge crime though, right? Like they go to like prison for yeah. that. Did they ever catch the person? I don't know. That's all the, the TMZ report. There was no follow-up. So Lana put this out and... So, and Ooh. then the last person was Beyonce. And I, I feel like Nothing can really happen to Beyonce, fingers crossed. Yeah. But people are saying now because that instead of Beyonce, Lizzo took that um, curse away. Because, she went to the concert. Because Lizzo went to the concert um, and was like praising Beyonce and they had that, that like interaction. So people oh. are saying it like transferred from Beyonce to Lizzo and she was the last Everyone one. Everyone thinks Beyonce is the all-powerful being. Like yeah. they, maybe she is. I don't know. You know, she's huge. So. Yeah. And I'd... She took the curse she's off. Like, yeah. And I feel like if anyone can escape it, it would, be, it would be Beyonce. Yeah. I don't think she's, I think like literally you could say anything about her and they'd be like, that's fine. We love her. Yeah. We stand her. Uh, so this is Lana in this 2020. Is prophecy pro- fulfilled. In 2023. Yeah. Dang. And Lana has, I think she has like some witchcraft vibes to her too. That's so. what I was thinking. I was yeah. like, oh, maybe she has a little bit of that. Maybe unintentionally. You know, she puts this out there and it happens. It's wild to me. And I'm just mm. glad that all the names are done now, hopefully. Right. So the prophecy has been fulfilled. Yeah, let's hope nothing else. <laughs> Why did she list those specific people? That's so like. I think because at the time they all had really. Oh, wait. And Kalani. I think Kalani broke her ankle when she was at Beyonce's concert. Kalani is P. Diddy's ex? I don't know. I don't know who's actually. She's I was a singer. Who dated. Oh, yeah, I forgot so who she bad. dated. But um, yeah, she's another. Singer. I need to like just listen to some relevant music. I think I listened to Becky G the other day, and I was like, "Oh, it's pretty good." I kind of like Becky G too. I, like Becky G. I think her boyfriend just cheated on yeah. her too, and he was like so handsome. Yeah. What, was there a tea on that? Was there drama? I feel like there was drama with that. Yeah, and then I think he had to post something on Instagram. He posted like a whole statement on Instagram. But yeah. But Dang, not she's good. like so pretty, and mm-hmm. I was just like, "How?" It's always like the pretty ones. I always and so she's, she's very sweet as well. I heard that. Maybe we can get her on the podcast. Yeah. I love She's Becky very G. sweet. Okay. I would love DM her. her. I, guess. <laughs> I would love. I never know. I always feel like, what if I just get put on blast? Like someone's like, ew, look at this person DMing me. I feel like, yeah, we need to get Lana on the podcast though. I would I love think it. that's the next step. And I feel like. Or Ariana, maybe. Why not? We don't have to talk about Wicked. We could just talk about like her music. Perfume. We would literally talk about her little pink. Bring lip. that pink cloud. <laughs> we would go down the whole history of her fragrances. Like, could not- you imagine? <laughs> we have her on. We just like talk about the notes <laughs> of the fragrances. I'm not. I'm not against it. Honestly, I'm not a journalist. I don't need to be held accountable. Like, oh, she didn't ask her the hard hitting questions. I'm like, I just want to know about this pink cloud. <laughs> And why are you announcing it in the midst of a scandal? Oh, we just asked about REM beauty. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Is that her beauty line? Yeah. So I am stuff. a rare beauty girl, so I don't Me know. Too. I do love a rare beauty. I love her beauty. <laughs> Selena Gomez next. Okay, back to back to not being misogynistic or being misogynistic. I don't know. Rachel Zegler, do you keep up with this at all? You're not about the Snow White drama, right? She's she, Again, she did a second interview where she's talking about not being saved by the prince. And everyone's like, okay, if everyone hates Snow White so much, why are you guys remaking it? Like, just make a whole new movie. But then she was on the picket line. Is that the right yeah. term? Okay, which I totally support the actor strike, all that, of course, a thousand percent. But she was saying, like, her, her argument was, like, you know, if I had to be 18 hours in that princess dress, I deserve, and I'm, like, pretty much paraphrasing, like, everything that she says. She goes, I deserve every uh, money for every hour that it's streaming. And everyone's just like, girl, like, people would first of all pay to be in that dress second of all you're getting paid up front millions of dollars for it third of all like really like is that the is that like you know like this, these people are having a hard time sympathizing with these people that are just like we get it get paid what you're worth but like when you say that this is like a struggle I saw someone else stitch it and be like you know I'm like at the ER for like 24 hours getting paid like nothing yeah. you know what I mean and again not to like compare but it's like do we have to say like so she's so aggressive and everyone's just like and I loved Rachel Zegler I loved her but she's been so aggressive lately be like this isn't 1937 we're not being saved by a prince I'm just like girl stop like what I feel like the point is good, but I feel like she's wording everything wrong, especially when it's like yeah, there's young. background actors and extras and writers and stuff who would literally have to live like paycheck to paycheck and make like scraps, you know, like yeah. in comparison to a star of a like, movie. Support all of that, especially she has like mock the Hunger Games movie coming out too this year. Oh, like she's everything. West Side Story was Steven Spielberg was like first yeah, movie. and I get even for like I mean like Sydney Sweeney said even for like her, you know, who you think like Euphoria would she would make a ton of money. So I get that there's stuff going on where like all because you 
are in a big project, like you don't get paid a lot of money, but still in comparison to like the extras and everyone else who the actors who just like love it and have to like wait tables as well as being, active, yeah. you know, like, or people who would like literally like for me, I mean, not that I'd ever be so white, but I mean, I would love to, I would pay money. Like what would be my equivalent? Like I would pay money to be in the remake of like little shop of horrors to play Audrey. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't have to pay me anything. Like I would actually pay or I'd pay to be on Broadway or something. So it's like also that kind of situation where it's like, girl, like, yeah, you're 18 hours in a princess dress, but this is like a big role. That's iconic that you'll get more jobs from. And that like, I'm like, why are you complaining about that? I don't know. It's just kind of, I get what you're saying like the, the sentiments there, but I think there's other people that are a little yeah. more like you should be fighting for over that it's hard to use, i do like her a lot too and she i'd love she's to she's kind to of be made, so sweet she's kind of made her brand about like being really like transparent and honest because that she's kind of like that on twitter slash x so <laughs> <laughs> i can twitter slash x. it's so unserious saying twitter slash i'm but, all about x x yeah. is paying now x people literally think i'm money obsessed which is not true <laughs> but i'm a tourist so i always think about money and i love that twitter is like paying now x, x. <laughs> I want to be on their good side. I want to be on Elon Musk's good side. You know what I mean? I think he could actually come on the podcast. He was on Joe Rogan's. I have some questions for him. Really? Yeah. What would you ask him? Well, my tire light went on in my Tesla today, so I really need to ask <laughs> oh him how God. How do I get that off? I would be like, <laughs> let's put some gas in these Teslas. <laughs> like, I don't know about charging in 30 minutes at like midnight. Thank you. Like, what is up with that? <laughs> As the aliens are here. Oh, my God. I, that was another thing that happened the same day we were recording, too. The whole alien hearing. It was like yeah. every time. Yeah. I know. The tea always comes out on Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the alien hearing, the aliens are here. It's confirmed. Yeah. Is that what happened? Basic- <laughs> basically. <laughs> I was trying to get ahead of you on that story. Uh- <laughs> the aliens are here. <laughs> My favorite thing is like um, Snooki's tweet went viral because she was like, "I we all knew it. They're finally here. And everyone was like, Snooki should be the UFO ambassador for like America. <laughs> I like being in charge of alien relations. Who would, what does what that would you mean? think? Just being like the uh, having like the interrelations between like the line of communication from America to oh me. <laughs> Honestly, I yeah, I would love to communicate with the aliens. <laughs> I I could see that. I've been talking about aliens literally for the past decade. You could YouTube this, Google it, Trish Paytas aliens. I've been talking about them for a minute, and not just that one time in 2019. Like I've been talking about aliens. I do think that they're here. I know that they're here. I feel presence of aliens. I used to always see like people say they saw ghosts. I used to always see aliens by my bed. Maybe it was like a dream, but like I've had dreams of like giant teeth and then giant aliens on my like at the foot of my bed and i don't know like i just feel like i've seen them before i would honestly trust you to like make sure that the aliens don't do anything like don't say it's hostile yeah i feel like if we have someone sweet like you we'd be safer could you imagine if i become like political and i'm like the (laughs) alien ambassador like for real because i a thousand percent should be and could be i think i and i see both sides now i'm mature i'm a mom you know what i mean like i think (laughs) who do i talk to who who puts that person in charge joe biden we have to go to where oh my god People are going to think I'm so stupid. Where is that place? What place? That in New Mexico? Area 51. Oh, Area 51. on the way to Vegas? Yeah. Yes, and they have the little, like, signs you can take pictures of aliens and stuff. I love that. That that one is an area. What are you That one is about? an Area 51. That's, like, an alien, like, gift shop. <laughs> At Area 51. <laughs> right? Oh, are you thinking of Area, the hotel in Vegas? No. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to Vegas is Area 51, no. and there is an alien gift shop. I don't think that's a real Area 51. What is it? Just the aliens on course, the freeway? Yeah, right? Isn't it Area 51 in New Mexico? Babe. Moses. <laughs> New Mexico's on the way to Vegas. Is it? I think so. The, the, I think it's further, like in Nevada. Like it's 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 secluded. But Ve- that's, that's Area 51's where they, in Nevada? Yeah, but I, th- I think oh, it's like it's really Nevada. far away, and they think that's where they crashed, and then that's where Area 51 is. Yeah, see, I don't think it's on the highway on on the side of the way to Vegas. I've been there. I need to send you contacts. I need to send you photos to edit in here because I've been there. I've been to the Area 51 with the aliens, but I don't know. They have like alien jerky and stuff you can buy. Yeah, and like, yeah. And there's also like ostrich jerky, like the next stop. Ew. I don't think what? it's like. really? Yeah. I'm not getting the ostrich jerky, but. <laughs> and like yeah. the dinosaur one too. It's like all on that strip, what? right? Oh, yeah. I've, that. I've literally been to the alien one. I didn't oh know there was God. all these other ones. There's all these little stops. Yeah, but I don't, the Vegas I don't think trip surreal. is crazy. Yeah, we have to go. We'll talk to Joe Biden about it, I guess. Yeah, while he's we'll still president. Also, stop body shaming Joe Biden. Like, what the hell? Like, Ooh. people, everybody's body shaming oh, him. People, I thought you said Scott. I thought it was Scott, oh, Scott Disick. Scott. I was like Scott Disick. <laughs> Not Scott Disick. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's saying he's like body's ugly. I'm like he's 80. He's old. Let's see your body at 80 years old. He looks pretty good to me. Uh, Men can be topless and girls can't. That's my other issue. Me trying to transition. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Speaking of being topless. Oh, yes. Harry Styles on vacation. Did you see the photos oh, of him? Oh, the Olivia his, tattoo. Yeah. Well, first of all, did you see the one where he was wearing his little uh, swimming trunks on the boat and he like rolled them up and everyone was comparing him to Britney because he had rolled his um, shorts so right. low. And he has the little like cuts like her. Yeah. Yeah. I lived yeah. for that. What is, how do you get those Vs? How do you get that? I... I had a trainer tell me how to do it once, but it sounded like too much work, and I was like, I can't. <laughs> is it like you have to eat a certain way yeah, or sit-ups? Like certain, it's like certain exercises and eating, It's which is like – Too much. Yeah. The v, but I also think it's genetic because not everyone has those Vs. Pink has a That's very true. deep V cut. Yeah. God, it looks so good. That's one thing. Like abs are amazing, but I don't I, think they'll ever have it. <laughs> They're so hard to get. Like I, like, I feel oh. – That's so hard. Yeah. So I don't know. And Harry is just like he's so thin and like I, I don't know. He can yeah. do whatever. Yeah. I'm back to Harry Styles fan now. I think after the Don't Worry Darling, I think I'm a fan of Oh, him. we're back on the train. Yeah, he's well, good. I only like it when he has an American accent, though. I don't like his British accent. <laughs> well, did you see his Olivia tattoo? That was yes. kind of like tea. Was it about Olivia Jade or Olivia Wilde? He, Jacob I heard Al- Olivia Jade in him. He's, Olivia Jade's dating Jacob Elordi from Euphoria. Ooh, he's also playing Elvis, right? Not a good the, cast. Yeah, a different Elvis. Why? Yeah. Why would you? Anyways, I love Austin Butler. He should have won. Oh, I thought Olivia. Okay, maybe I got those two mixed up. I think, as far as I know, Harry. Because Harry loves like an older girl, and Olivia, I think, was too is younger. Okay. Yeah. How how, how old is he and how old is Olivia? Uh, what? Harry is younger than I think. Harry's a year younger than me, so he's thirty, I think. Oh, so he's not like that. Why do I think he's like twenty? He's like uh, a, like a little you kid. You think all like the? I guess I think of One Direction. I think of young. Now they're all like. And Olivia Wilde's oh. thirty nine. <gasps> But oh, that's a big – and she was married when she did the movie? Yeah, or, or separated. in the process of separation, I think. That's some internal misogyny too. I don't know anything about her, but I feel like she was getting a lot of unwarranted hate a lot of for like – uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't – again, I don't know anything about her, but then when you watch the movie, you just think of that, the scandals and the controversies and all that. Yeah, like that. and it kind of derailed that whole movie. Although, I don't know, because then Florence Pugh was – like she kind of threw Florence Pugh under the bus, so it's oh, like – I don't know about oh, that. Oh, my God. Messy. So he has the tattoo. Is this new? Uh, or is this just the first time people are seeing it? I think it, it, may, it maybe it's just the first time people are seeing it, but it's so – it's kind of such a hairy thing to do. And One Direction had a song called Olivia, so I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, maybe it was like – manifesting yeah. that yeah i don't know why people get tattoos of people's names that's what i was gonna ask you i was like i could never do that either even if i was like married i don't know if i no, would no why why don't do it yeah. it's it's so weird at first like in my toxic era i think it's like oh that's so cute and romantic but it's like you don't need to like brand somebody for them to like love you although i guess i'm not a tattoo person maybe you're a tattoo person you're thinking of it as like an expression of love and dedicated maybe that's the whole thing or like, even know. like maybe the moment i don't know but even i got the only i only have one tattoo and you i got do? it yeah i have a sna- um, oh yeah and it's for my reputation era because i was like going yeah but i got oh it God. with a guy i was dating at the time Ooh. like he also got one at the same time but isn't that kind of like ick now your boyfriend's like mm. i would think so but i think it was maybe i am seeing it from harry's side for me it was just like so whatever that he was there and he was like so lame because he told me not to eat before i got my tattoo and then i almost fainted <laughs> and the tattoo eat? i was like you should eat something and i was looking at him like are you for like <gasps> was it a set i don't know oh my god so he was just so lame that i just don't think of him at all you know but yeah that tattoo and now you're talking about him so now you're so thinking maybe about not, him yeah I would but be pissed. Otherwise, like on a date, like if I see my tattoo, I would never like think of him. Really. I guess, yeah. and it's on you, so like, yeah, let's not feel bad about your tattoo. It, yeah. And so, does, he, does Harry have a lot? I don't know. Harry has a lot of tattoos. Okay, yeah. so maybe for him, it's like Travis it's like Barker, is like just another, yeah. you know. Which I mean, like, it's major, but I mean, it's like right across his thigh. Are they dating? Are they still dating? No, they're not together anymore. He was on vacation with the Victoria's Secret model, oh. so people were thinking he was dating her. But the reporting I heard <laughs> was that they were just platonic. I don't know if you can be platonic. Do you think you can be platonic? If you're like <laughs> Harry Styles and you're vacationing with a Victoria's Secret model like on a yacht. Yeah, I don't think that's platonic. Uh, yeah. That's, that's weird. Like if I was like in the south of France promoting the Idol 2 with Abel on a yacht <laughs> and I'm not with you, wouldn't you be like, that's kind of weird? Be there too. Right. Like let's say you're watching it. Let's say I'm like, I'm going on a yacht with Abel, but it's platonic. Wouldn't you be like, mm. That's not platonic. Thank you. See, that's yeah. what I'm saying too. That's I don't think vacation. that is. Yeah, and that's even it. Right. And I was saying in the scenario we were promoting the idol, but let's just say it's not. I'm just like, you know what? I'm actually going to go see Abel on Con. I had a dream about this the other night. No, but if you're promoting something, it's business and I'll be there. Right. Because you're my body. manager, sound tech. <laughs> Someone called you a Swiss Army knife this morning, and I thought that was an accurate representation because you really can do everything. You have all the gadgets and tools. You would a thousand percent be there. Because it's like, this is one of those things where it's like, 
I don't know. Like, I think it's very natural to be, like, attracted to people, right? But it's, like, if you don't have your spouse with you or something, I think it's, like, weird. I don't know. Then the Dalton That's and funny. Ariana thing, like, apparently she allegedly met the spouse and the baby. Yeah. That's a whole other level. Like, I just think, again, it's, like, a punch. Like, it's a punch. Like, I think about that, right? Like, my favorite person at the moment is, like, the weekend. But, again, just, like, that difference. I know, whatever. But I was, like, I wouldn't have him come meet, like, Moses and my baby and then, like, have an affair. Like, that's weird. The last I heard about it is that she is – making uh ethan take some space because of the whole situation that was like, like the i last... don't want you anymore <laughs> yeah which is that it's just like so embarrassing for him because then he ha- he's had this whole mess for something that was never gonna last in the first place you know i'm just telling you again i'm putting myself like, i'll put i'll put moses in the situation this time so it's not me like he's, he's working with ariana and she's just like can't resist him right you know she sees that like, oh my god i can't resist you it's like i guess have the affair but like don't like you know humiliate me don't like dissolve the marriage don't like not see your child because of it you know what i mean i don't mm-hmm. know i still wouldn't be like that okay with it, but it's Ariana Grande and I know Moses has a crush on her <laughs> he won't tell me his celebrity crush well, huh because I don't have one you're my celebrity <laughs> <laughs> yeah his TikTok is now Trisha Paytas fan account he changed the bio and I was like okay if you don't think I did that I definitely did not I love it I love that you did it he tells me he does not have a celebrity crush I don't believe him I'm married to my celebrity crush okay but before so, me I never think that way he said he never thought that way about celebrity like he never had crushes on this I think I was just too realistic really that's yeah. so weird I'm like the opposite of your bread <laughs> situation I, know. I would love to be as like mentally stable and sound as Moses like it's imagine crazy. being that like normal and well adjusted I know no he's so normal and so well adjusted and doesn't have these like Delulu fantasies and I'm just like how like, like in my I'm head so I really jealous. think about like okay the weekend the idol too like you know I'll be like Lily Rose's mom maybe or something but then like oh my god if Abel gets too close to me I gotta you know what you know I think about these things for real and I'm just like how do you not think about these scenarios yeah I've always had like crazy scenarios of like when I loved Harry I was always like oh like I'd run into him or there was one time he was doing promotion for his movie Dunkirk so and I like went to the do the junket and I got dressed specifically in an outfit that I thought he would like I love that so it would start the conversation you know what I mean and (laughs) did it it did but as I was leaving he's like oh I love your shirt by the way and I was like thanks what was the shirt it was just like a pink button up that had some like embroidery it was like it was just very hairy at the time this was like what 2018 or 2017 and I knew he would like it but yeah the (laughs) If it was just a little sooner, like, I really felt like, you know, right, like the connection. conversation would have started. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in your head, do you see yourself, like, maybe one day you and Taylor could become friends? Because she comes friends with her famous, like, yeah. be, like Tant Audric, right? I had my whole thing. I, I think if I met her bef- when she was less famous, like, her earlier eras, I would be her It's hard right to now. get in when they're super famous, yeah. I think. Because mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't trust anyone. I don't trust anyone now. I wouldn't trust anyone at that level. Yeah. I'd be like, mm, no. But luckily, I got in. We became friends, like, <laughs> when you were just, like, heartbroken. <laughs> you were, like, the first person to ever want to like interview me i think the only person to want to interview me still to this day i think you're the only one who sets up my interviews for me so i was like i like this person i don't think i had any other interviews besides you that was so, so funny was, of course i loved it but yeah it is hard i think to be especially like who is oh well you're just getting close to fans in general is like never a good idea anyway yeah. so you always have to be a little like you know yeah i guess thing, it's different but. when there's like a media like you know there's a air of professionalism even though i was like fully like, totally <laughs> i would always want to be professional too you yeah. know what i mean i feel like i work in relationships good yeah. because i know how i could come across to i don't know i could just all be bad and i don't know there's certain people uh-huh. to lulu yeah but we can't help it it's just it's who we are at this point no you know? sometimes i think about that too i just think about like i don't know <laughs> i won't share all my things i sometimes i think about crazy but they go they go quickly like i go through phases and yeah. they go pretty quick for the most part i think donny osmond has stuck i love donny osmond he never responds to me ever but um i love donny Yasmin for a long time but he's like I think he's safe because he's a Mormon he's been married for like 40 years yeah. like I don't think he's but I think all my phases go by pretty quick right they go yeah I think that maybe that's why I don't feel threatened by anyone <laughs> they come and go but I'm here <laughs> Oh, that's right. You never do. I swear. There'll be like a new TV shot with someone I like and he'll be like, yeah, we can watch. I'm like, really? Like you, you really are cool like that. But I think Donny Osmond does. We went to his show and he recognized you. He does remember you. He says he remembers me. But I had a, ma- I had a COVID mask <laughs> that's on. That's like, what I'm you- saying. You had a mask on and he asked you like, wait, I know you. Take the mask off. I'm like, yes, I know you. Yeah, that actually. I so replay actually that moment in my head a lot. Behind the mask. That's true. He was. <laughs> he was. He's like, wait, take your mask down. And I was during COVID and I was like, it was like a movie. <laughs> He's like, yes, I recognize you. Oh, I love that. That's Donny very Edmund. Cinderella. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know my phases. They, they they go pretty quick, so I'm sure I'll be over whatever this phase is. The idol phase. The idol phase. <laughs> God, I wish the strike would like era. get resolved. I want to have people on from there. I think it's time we get into the big story. The big story. The big story, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I like Taylor Swift, I think. Tell me your history with okay. Taylor. Like, what do you know of her? Um, 
I know she had a song called Blank Space. Okay. And it was about her being a crazy. She's like, because darling, I'm a nightmare, just like a daydream. Period. Oh, yeah. So that was lyrics spoke to me where she's like, so it's going to be forever or it's going to go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. Mm-hmm. Yet the price is worth the pain. Got a long list of ex-lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. And I got a blank space, baby. And I'll write your name. Blank space, Trisha's version. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, don't copyright me. I know she like does not like things on iTunes or copy. Don't copyright me for that. I love that because I, I really did relate to that song when it came out. Like I didn't know anything about Taylor, but I was like, oh my God, this is like my song, my anthem right here. See, that's why I always thought that you would be into Taylor Swift because yeah. she is very, especially when she was younger, she was very much like the girl that was scorned and writing about her feelings and, and always like really, really honest. Yeah. Um, And that's how I got into her. So I started standing from her the get go okay from, from like the debut era Tim McGraw yeah, yeah Tim McGraw like Tim our McGraw. song yeah okay. that's when I started getting in. so it was like right after her first album came out I feel like maybe I didn't like Taylor I, maybe I had internalized misogyny I don't know maybe it was maybe it was like I was jealous of like I think I was definitely jealous of so many people I don't know about Taylor so maybe I was I don't know for me I was always jealous of people where I was like oh I could do that I could be that but Taylor Swift I could never like be or relate to because I was never like a songwriter or a singer or anything like that so I don't know you're a singer Right. And a songwriter. <laughs> yeah. I really love you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but I, maybe it was a little jealous. But she was a, she's younger than me, so I don't think it was that. I don't know. Well, I think, too, like, because in the, her first couple eras, I feel like she represented, like, purity and girl. She was very oh, marketed yeah. to be, like, you know, the good girl. I don't like... <laughs> I think it's good, but I always hate on purity people. Like, Jonas Brothers, too. I was yeah, like, like, she never had, like, a purity ring or talked about it, really, but she was just marketed as, like, the good girl who doesn't, like, drink or... Yeah. Especially I was, wanted like, to be time. the bad girl. Yeah. I wanted to be, like, Jenna Jameson or something. I'm like, and I want to be bad. Time was, like, Miley, and, like, it was, like, that group. Yeah, that was, like, my drug binge era, so I wasn't keeping up with anything. <laughs> this was, like, Twilight era, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, all those... I'm like, I don't know what's going on in the Dude, world. That's what I was, like, eating all that up, because okay. I was just, like, yeah. You were in I high was, like, school? A, yeah, I was in high school, just, like, mm. kind of alone, and so I really ate all that stuff up. I yeah, yeah. This is all like very like my brand. That's so, so interesting yeah. that you like gravitated towards. It was definitely Taylor. It was always yeah. She was in my MySpace. Remember, it was like who you like to me, and I would put Ta- like she was my number one. Wow, yeah. and you so met her. Full circle. Oh my god, you're going to two shows, yeah. Taylor. I know you're not doing mean greets, but if you want to do a sign circle. hello. <laughs> I love your stuff. Maybe she could come on after she's done touring. Yeah, maybe save so. her voice. Yeah, she, she had like her big canceled era, and I didn't think she would come back. From okay, what did she get canceled? Did we talk about this? <laughs> I swear, I've never heard Taylor Swift getting canceled ever. The, it was big at because the time. of Kanye. Yeah, so and it was like during her peak. It was during 1989, so it was like the biggest pop album. Why 1989? Uh, not the year, the album. But why is it called 1989? Because she was born in 1989. Oh, she's yeah. only a year younger than me. Yeah. No. Yeah. She's 34 then. Yeah. Oh my god, that's wait, what? So she is my era. That's so weird. I guess she grew. Yeah, grew up at the same, but very oh, different life experiences. I guess you know she's yeah. a country singer. <laughs> true, true, country true. Country singer. Oh my god. <laughs> that's crazy wow she's born in the 80s that's so weird yeah well december 1989 so like she was only in you know, the, the 80s, right? of the 80s <laughs> yeah. right okay interesting okay yeah. cool i love that um so it was like the peak of her success because she had so many number ones she had made up with kanye and kanye had he released a song and there was a line in it saying like me and taylor swift might still have sex why because i made that bitch famous so this song came out and everyone was like Ew. what the hell and Taylor made a statement at the Grammy. She won the Grammy and she said, like, no one can take credit for my fame or my success or whatever. Yeah, that's so ick for yeah. a number of reasons, but ick. Then Kim had released a voice memo of a recording of Taylor and Kanye having a conversation where Kanye told Taylor about the song and she laughed. She's like, oh, I guess that's funny. Uh- what was that trying to show? What did that prove? So it was that she just, Kim was trying to prove asked. that Kanye asked permission and Taylor knew about it and approved it before the song came out. So this voice memo came out and everyone was like, wow, Taylor is a snake. Like, Oh my she, God. Just she's like, that's funny, I guess. Because <laughs> everyone was like, oh, she she took the uh, on the Grammys to victimize herself. Why is everyone attacked? She, well, her she didn't get girl. canceled. She's just getting attacked for yeah, what? Calvin, for literally nothing. Calvin Harris came out and tweeted uh, stuff about her. So basically yeah. anyone who ever like had beef with her like jumped on the moment. And Taylor Swift is over. Party was like the number one trend on Twitter. The origin of the snake symbolism for Taylor is when everyone was commenting uh. her Instagram like snake, 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 snake. I was like, F y'all. Like, yeah. I literally did nothing but like <laughs> Connie's intimidated me and the VMAs. Like I, I'm still, he's still more powerful than I am so let me just say haha this is funny like yeah and then I guess she 
came back as a bad oh, and I, lo- I, I was love, I love I love when the good girls go bad. It I didn't know like, she had a bad era. It was like, that's iconic right there. <laughs> See, like that's why I I'm gonna make you a playlist and like of like the essential songs I think you would like, and then I yeah. think that you would really go on the the full journey, especially now being a Swifty yes. is in. It is fully totally to be no. A it's like everywhere all over my timeline. Everyone in LA is going to the Swift show. I'm like, okay, let's. Everyone's making friendship bracelets. She Everyone's should... dressing up. Wait, what's friendship bracelets? She has this, a line in one of her songs that said, "Make the friendship bracelets. Take the moment and taste it." And now everyone's oh. making friendship bracelets and trading them. Okay. Like Gigi Hadid even made friendship bracelets oh. and was trading them with fans. Oh my god, Jennifer Lawrence good. was making friendship bracelets and trading them oh my out. God. Jennifer Lawrence is everywhere. She's like on the pulse of everything. She's like friends with the Kardashians. She's friends with Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Like that's so crazy. Okay, I love that. The she, inf- the celeb- is real. Yeah, okay. the celebs love Taylor. Everyone's coming out. Everyone's supporting. I think she should do a collab with the Swiffer Jet. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so cute? Like a Taylor Swiffer Jet? That is so because people who um, call Swifty a Swiffer sometimes. Too, I love so. that. I love the Swiffer so much. I don't do I I do the dishes and I that's it. And but I also Swift the floor and I think it's so fun. And when I think of Taylor Swift, I always think of the Swiffer. <laughs> and I'm like, how have they not collabed? Like that's literally the best thing. Like I honestly should collab with toilet paper. My initials are TP. I should be with a toilet paper company. That's you know what I mean? Comic. That's pretty good brand. I have a long history with toilet paper. You know, like a good and bad. <laughs> I love well. toilet paper. <laughs> I'm the face of it. Oh, <laughs> man, toilet paper is everything. everything. Um, but she doesn't do brand deals or anything, right? Not really anymore. She used to do. She was the face of Diet Coke for a while, but she hasn't done anything in. That is very random. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone being the face of Diet Coke. Yeah, she was a, She was in all the commercials. They had special Diet Cokes that were just like Taylor songs. Oh. Yeah. I'm surprised she did that. Like, isn't that promoting diet culture? This was, yeah, this was Love pretty, Diet Coke, by the way. Me too. I love it's a Diet so Coke. It's so good. I think it tastes better than regular. Me too. I hate when I, you can taste the difference like immediately. Yes. Why do people say it's so nasty? I'm sorry. The regular Coke, he drinks regular Coca Cola and it's like so sugary. I'm yeah. Like, no, no, I, I had India Diet Coke. Oh, I'll be the face of Diet Coke. But I didn't know people were the face of Diet Coke because I thought it's like problematic because Diet Coke is like not good for you. I, don't, I think maybe not. But at the time, this was like 2012 or whatever. So it was And also, like, she's so like. Thin, you know. Yeah, like, she actually had an ED, and she has opened up about it too. Oh. Yeah, because in 1989, like that era, she was like super, super skinny, um, and she talked about like her struggle with like food and stuff. But she didn't come out with oh. that until 2019. So isn't it crazy how many people struggle with that? I know that's why people say they're not saying anything about anyone's weight. Because I look at her, I'm like, God, she's so lucky to be like skinny when yeah. she like, struggles with them. Like, yeah, I always forget about that. Like, that's like one thing I need more sensitive for is like when I tell people they're skinny, like they could like be so triggering for real. Because th- that's a compliment to me. If you're like, I'm skinny, I'm like, thank you. But same, yeah, it's so different for everyone. And yeah. then I know that there was a big thing because there was like fans that would come up to her before like this stuff came out, but like you're just so like thick now, like as a compliment, like T H I C C. But for someone who had, like, you know, yeah, like you just like, never know what anyone's going through, you know? Yeah, yeah. Also, I think, like, commenting on anyone's weight gain, whether it's, like, a healthy weight gain. I think Selena Gomez was just getting body shamed again for being in her bikini. And I'm yeah. like, why? Why are people – they're all, like – you know, they get older. People get older, you just, like, mature, body you know? Shamed, yeah. What is with the body shame? I'm so over it. I'm so, I hate that people comment on people's things. Like, weight gain, weight Especially loss. Especially now, you would think that, like, I know. everything would shift a little bit when it has for so many other, like – Causes. Although, if I lost weight, if I lost 100 pounds, I would want people to comment on it. Yeah, me too. You know? I know. <laughs> but it's person to person. Like, you Because that same, I think the TikTok we saw, the same girl was like, I don't want to share my before and after because I think that's like triggering to people and stuff like that. But I mean, I probably would. But I don't think I'm going to lose 100 pounds. But if I do, I would. Yeah. I When I was super skinny, I did because I was like proud of it. Yeah. I was like, wow. Like, you know, but it's yeah. different for everyone, I guess. Yeah. I think when you're just like never been skinny and you're skinny, you're just like, wow. Because you yeah. will get the glory as opposed to like if you gain 100 pounds, no one's going to give you glory yeah. for that. Oh, the body issues. I feel like we talk about body issues every um Yeah, it always episode. comes back to us. I, know. All I think about it all the time. I always think about my weight. I always think not like it consumes me, but like even yesterday I had like a salad at her like lunch and then I was like so hungry by dinner and all I was thinking about was like I'm so hungry, but I don't want to eat because I'm gonna look fat in a swimsuit. Like I don't know, it's like so annoying. I know, like same. I was like crying yesterday because I couldn't didn't have time to work out and I was like, Oh my god, I'm gonna look huge in this. I body. know. Yeah. I get that same way when we don't go for a walk or something, I'm just like, oh, I'm getting fatter. It's it is annoying anyways. It's See, so frustrating. I wonder what your like if you had to go on an Aero's toilet. I always think about this too. Like, what would the Trish eras be? Hmm. We talked about doing eras, or you said like you should do eras t shirts. <laughs> yeah, I want you to. What was my era? I don't even know what my first era was. Yeah, like, what was like your first first? Um, hmm, maybe like. I don't know. It depends how old you are. <laughs> like, I feel I, like I was making videos. Like, I started making videos in 2007. So, I guess you were maybe old enough. I don't know. Yeah, I remember seeing the first time. Maybe it was the dog one. Do dogs have brains? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if that's like an era. Like, I don't even know what's popular anymore. Like, what people know before. I mean, it's like crying on the kitchen floor is an era. That's 100% an era. That's an era. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh. it. <laughs> um, mommy era. Um, I don't know. Just, chicken nugget era? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
what does that even mean? People always say that to me. No, people say that. They're like, oh, chicken nugget. Is it just like, like the one video? I'm feeling like a chicken nugget? I think people I just associate with you. With chicken nuggets. I yeah. do love chicken nuggets. I know. I saw it on TikTok too where they were the one where I was like opening the chicken tenders from Jerry Sally. It was so good. And I'm like, oh, I love chicken tenders. That it, the dr- been. Um, actually, it could just be all your meat. Okay. No, because sad boy. Fully oh, with it. Yeah. but no one really cared. <laughs> Not true because again, you reposted that on TikTok, the the music video, That's and it crazy. blew up again. It's not funny how people see that stuff. It, it is, is weird. So timeless. Yeah, I think Sad Boy was like, even though it's like before, it's I think it's ahead of its time. Like it's like too early to bring back the emo 2005. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They tra- now it's like, what you did the bracelet, um, not bracelet, the <laughs> pendant, the friendship. Oh, the BFF pendants, yes. Oh, yeah. I think Taylor probably saw that. She was like, let me write write about that. Let me do my own (laughs) friendship bracelet. Um, yeah, I guess there was those eras. Yeah, they were good. All my eras are just copying other people, though. Like, Sad Boy was copying My Chemical Romance. And... But you put your pers- your Trish stamp on it. Things. I try. Yeah. I know. I copy Britney with, like, all my music videos, but... The Cleopatra, it has to also be... <laughs> oh, King Tut. <Ty>. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, Cleopatra. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, man. That wasn't even that long ago. No, but that counts as its own. It doesn't matter the, the time era. span. Yeah. I love TikTok. I think that's the only platform that still cares. <laughs> What? It's always so it's the most random because it'll be like <laughs> it'll be like just Trish and then it'll be um, uh, reviewing a food and then meditation. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, I know I'm kind of all over the place right now, but I feel like I'm, I'm really like leaning into the just Trish era right now because it's so much fun. See, this is more eras, like yeah, yeah it's okay. like my pink era, my comeback Barbie era. I don't know, I don't have eras. What are your eras? Do you have any? I feel like I don't have any. I, you definitely have eras because I think there's so many different like the ASMR is an era, Sad Boys an era, really. Um, uh, Chick Parmesan and Heartbreak is an era. Oh my god, that was literally like one person. You're the only one that remembers that album, <laughs> no, Chicken Parmesan Heartbreak. No, it's like I, love, I love you, Jesus. Like you have. Oh, I had a Christian music era yeah. for sure. Yeah, because every phase that you've been through is an era. For me, I don't really go through that many. Like everything, you just been phases, Taylor just, like, Swift all the yeah, way. Taylor, the, everything that I liked when I was younger, I still like. Like Taylor, you, I still like Joey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Joey Grisapa. <laughs> Like, I just kind of like the same stuff. That's so funny. I add a couple things here and there. Like, Who did you add along the way? Who's your newest obsession? My new – it was Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, right. Yeah. You stand her. Yeah, like per, everything was purple for a minute. Like, <laughs> Is that the name uh, of her song? <laughs> that was just a, her, the color of her era was was la, light purple. Oh, I love yeah. when people color coordinate their eras. I think that's everything. Me too. I love a aesthetic to go with it. Yeah. I think Taylor Swift had red, right? Yeah, she did every – her and her heiress tour, she separates, so every era is a different color. What was after the reputation? She went bad, and then what? So, it, reputation was black color, and then she did the opposite, lover. Oh. Yeah, so she did a complete, what inspired like, 180. that? Because she was in a relationship, um, so I think she was just actually, and that's actually who she really is, you know? Like, she can pretend to be, like, right. the bad girl, which is kind of, like, very me-coded. Like, I am just... At the end of the day, I'm just like sweetie, uh, right. very sweetie coated, but sweetie-coated. like the idea of being a baddie and like you totally. know getting revenge. And Me stuff, too. I you like know? the idea of being a baddie, and I'm like just not. Yeah, I, like, exactly. Don't like to break it's the rules. Time. Totally. So. <laughs> I'm like no, I'm a yeah. baddie, but also I don't love like getting all, uh, dressed up as a snake and like just feeling like I can do. You know. <laughs> I love that. What yeah. era am I? What am I? Your lover right now. I'm lover. That was mm-hmm. the. Gay rights era. Yes, Love yes, that. and then after that, um, she did folklore and Evermore, and that's when she really got famous because it was, uh, it was like her quarantine album, and it was all like acoustic, like folky kind of mm. like. That's when she got music. famous. They were like, we yes. like this. Weirdly, tech. That's when like TikTok like blew up what? her music. Well, name a folk song that she did. Uh, and when I felt like I was in a cardigan under someone's bed. Do you know that one? We watch TikTok all the time. We watch TikTok all through quarantine. Never heard of that <laughs> in my life. Been. The one. Um, those we know one Taylor Swift. You know one song. Go with the Taylor Swift song that you know off TikTok. We were talking about it in like the shower the other day. You're like the only song I know is this. I'm like that is the song. <laughs> or was that you? Him in the shower? No, <laughs> like, you, what? baby. Remember? You have to remember. What's me. the trend when we got engaged? That everyone was doing. He pulls pulls out a oh. ring and says, "Marry me, oh, Julia." Oh, because we were listening to this song, and I was like. It was playing in the restaurant. I'm oh, like, yeah. wait, this song is like the TikTok oh, song. Yeah, they yeah, stole yeah. it. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. And you were like, no, this is the song. He's like, this sounds like Mary Me. I'm like, that is it. Yes, That's her. her? Yes, that, okay. that's her. That was the only one we knew, but that was like so old, but that oh was a TikTok trend. What's like the newest song that's like big? Um, Antihero. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. Oh, yeah. It's me. I know that from Pem Badgley when he oh, was yeah, promoting when he did you. His TikTok. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. I know. Yeah. That is a good song. That is a good. Yeah. Um, that's her latest me. era. Hi. 
Why is it called anti-hero? Basically, she's saying how she comes is obsessed with being a good person and like looking like a good person. Mm. But at the end of the day, she's like, there's things that she's like unhappy with about herself. Like, mm. I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. I, I mean, know. that I can't relate to. I actually love to look in the mirror. As much as I hate <laughs> being fat, I have the opposite of you where I think I'm like skinnier until I watch myself back. I'm like, God, I'm so fat. But I really think like, oh my God, I look so skinny. I like- honestly <laughs> think, that for the, I think that for the most part until I put on, it's because like I always wear like bigger t-shirts now. Like I'll wear like shorts mm. with like bigger t-shirts yeah. and like, I don't know, I feel skinny. But then the second I put on something tighter, I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah, you feel yeah. it more. Yeah. I don't feel until I'm like next to someone, I feel maybe that's tiny and then someone points it out and then I'm like, oh, I don't know. I always just feel so skinny. <laughs> yeah, it is a state of mind as we said. Skinny totally. legend is a state of mind. Wait, who says that? I just said that. Oh. <laughs> Brand it. I yeah, love that. Skinny legend smart. is a state of mind. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's true because we talked about being a skinny legend. Yeah. It's like it, it's not really about being skinny. It's no, about how you feel. Feeling it. Yeah. And I think a skinny legend represents just like Oh, you know, everyone loves skinny and worships skinny. So it's like just you worshiping yourself at your best self. Period. So, you know, period. Yeah. That's our skinny legend era <laughs> is like the next one. Period. I really wish that you can go to the Eras tour, though. That was like my big, that was going to be my big like scheme was <sighs> just to tie it all up in that. But that would have been a lot. I think there's going to be a movie, though. So maybe we'll just like screen that. What? Yeah. Oh, the Sh- tour is going to be a movie. Yeah. I don't know if I could sit there. Honestly, I don't love concerts. Hers is long, too. It's three hours. Oh, no. No, no, no. I mean, Donny Osmond has a one-hour show at Harrah's, and that is perfect timing. I could not imagine sitting through three hours of my favorite band, even my chemical romance. I think I could do maybe an hour, like, tops. It's a long show. Oh, my God. How does she not get tired? I think that's why she only is uh, – that's why she, no meet and greets. She's saving her voice. Well, she has done a meet and greet with Taylor Lautner and Taylor well, that's Lautner. Definitely, that wasn't like a uh, – yeah. <laughs> that's a meet and greet, a, yes. It was a marketing thing, too. You think? Yeah, because they were in her music video. Both of them? Um, well, Taylor Lautner, the male, was. Oh, yeah. but his wife was not. No. I like that they're all friends. Yeah, I think it's sweet. I love that they're all named Taylor and they all dated each other. Wait, so Taylor Lautner dated Taylor Swift when the Kanye West thing was happening? Yes. And he didn't do anything? No, and then that was like his big regret, he said, was like he wished. I guess like, what was should. he supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> Just everyone like, was kind of like shook. <laughs> Poor Taylor. I yeah. think she'll get a happy ending. I think she'll find a... I know. She doesn't need a man. I know. Blah, blah, blah. But right. I Rihanna's like first thing I don't look confirm yeah. man. Yeah. But I think <laughs> Taylor likes to be with I in a relationship. She, yeah, I think she's a romantic and yeah. she likes dating too, which like again, very me coded. Yeah. Um I think that happened. <gasps> Are you bringing your boyfriend to the concert? To yeah. Are you going to propose during so love, love story? Oh, he would literally kill me. He Wait, would, really? He's not a Swifty. He is a Swifting <laughs> like in uh, solidarity. Okay, yeah. with you. I love the TikToks. I saw me one. Me too. They're sweet. Did you but... see the one where the guy was like me thinking he's gonna propose during this part and then he does it and then his <laughs> no. face just like dies. He's just like okay, <laughs> just filming this for fun. I love when people give the phones to other people next time and be like, I'm gonna propose during Glove Story. Yeah. Like get the like record us. Get this wrong. Yeah. Oh man, you what? You, he wouldn't I, like that. He, he would literally kill me. Maybe he would do it to you. Maybe he'll propose to you. He's also like doesn't love the big spectacle. Like I told him that so. My Eras tour plan. This is going to sound like crazy and neurotic. Delulu. And Delu- fully Delulu. I, I don't it. care. Like, I'm going to be talking very hyperbolic for the next few minutes. Okay, what's I that mean? What's care. hyperbolic? Just very extreme, very intense. Okay. And, like a hyperbole. And yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. This is going to, like, I'm going to the Eras tour twice. It's going to be the two most important days of my life. I've gone before, yes, for the okay. opening night, but it was so very worky and I was alone in. Arizona. Oh. Oh. So it was just like not like That's a Lana Del Rey title. Experience. Alone in Arizona. <laughs> Alone in Arizona at the Aero store. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I'm getting there early. My I have the VIP tickets, <gasps> which was really just expensive tickets that they are saying. Oh, VIP. you bought them. But did you yeah. say someone gave you some too? So for night one, I bought it. For night two, closing night, her publicist gave me a ticket. So it's going to be kind of worky, but a Swifty, it's my Swifty duty. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You know, You're like, I'll do it. I paid to do it. Yeah. So the first night, I have my reputation outfit um, from Etsy. It's coming in today. Fingers crossed it's oh my, fit. Yes, it will. Oh, oh my hoping. God. Here's you hoping. look great. Yeah. Um, and then my boyfriend is lover era. Um, so he's going to be in all pink. He's dressing up too? Yeah. He's going to be in all pink. What pink outfit? Because I was looking for pink outfits. He's not like a specific look. He's just wearing pink pants to, and okay. a pink top and a pink hat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're getting there at three. The merch the merch line at the Aero store is an all day thing. I saw it at like 1.46 a.m. People, People are lined are lining up. up. Because they're there's the blue crew neck that is only sold at the Eras tour. Oh my god, that's probably online. Everyone wants it is, but it's marked up, so Aww. it's like and part, like I just have to like it's part of the Swifty experience to wait in line at the merch truck. So oh my god, the VIP merch opens at three when you get in. So I'm getting there at three. She doesn't come on until eight, so I have five hours to kill in between. So between those five hours, I have to get my <laughs> what Instagram. Are you do for five hours? 
flowers. I'm gonna get my Instagram pic. My boyfriend is gonna be like the photographer. It's gonna be a whole. Do you whole... get food at the concert? Usually I don't because I'm so like yeah. cracked out that I'm like that's all I can think about. What do they serve at concerts? Do they serve like nachos? Yeah, I would nachos love to get nachos. So... And like yeah, hot dogs, nachos. Oh, I love that though. But they have like specific. They make up like little drinks that are like Taylor arrows and love references. That. It's very cute. That's cute. I would I would get popcorn and nachos. And, and... everyone's trades their friendship bracelet. My boyfriend, as we speak, is making the friendship bracelets. Wait, so what are you gonna do with them? You're gonna go train them with just other trade people. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, kind of I, I feel like, like that. I'm, I'm getting into the whole like experience. Yeah. Like, because this is it. It's you know, excitement. this is it. Like, yeah, like there's something exciting to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, then what? <laughs> What's next? Just Trish. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> just Trish. Sorry. That's you have to come back got. to Just Trish. I think I would only want to perform if I could sell out Sophie. I don't think I want to perform at anything less. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. I was like, I don't want to just perform at like the mint. <laughs> Did that. I want to do only Sophie Stadium. <laughs> Maybe if, like Britney I would and I live or something. For that. That'd be great. Like at the Super Bowl, Britney brings me out as like a special guest. Oh, Taylor is so weird. Oh my See, gosh. I feel like you kind of bought into like the Swift lore a little bit. Totally. I I I I feel like when Emily Ratatowski was saying her, is Emily saying her name right? Yeah. Ratatowski. Yeah. She um, she, you know, she kind of that. She's like, you know, I saw her live. I think if I saw her live, like you do have like the whole different appreciation for yeah. someone. Kind of with Elton John too. I went to his show and I'm like not an Elton John fan, but I was like, oh, he's like really good for like <laughs> 70 years old. Like he was like rocking and stuff like that. And I was kind of like that. I, so I think with Taylor Swift, like I'm sure if I saw her and I saw like however many people, what 70,000 people or whatever, I'd, I'd be like, damn, this is like pretty impressive. Of like all these people for mm-hmm. you. I mean, Does like she dance? Is she like a dancer too? Or she's, no? um, she dances in her own way. Okay, she's not, like, she's not like Britney. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Okay, she doesn't do like choreography. No, it's that's why some people, especially with Beyonce right now, there's people that like compare the two tours. That's like I mean, Beyonce is doing all this dancing, blah blah blah. But Taylor, that's not really her vibe. Like she has pop music, yeah, but like she's singer song right at the end of the day. Right, she's you know? folk. Yeah, folk she likes. Some, she's like. She's moving. There's people dancing around her. She's doing her own thing. She just looks fierce. She just There's has There's light outfits. choreography. Yeah. A lot yeah. of like hair flips. I love that. Like a lot of looks. Yeah. It's pretty fierce. Oh my God. I love Taylor. And who she is. She. Anyways. I was going to say she ain't anyone now. That doesn't matter. Not important. Travis Kelsey actually recently said he tried to give her his number. And she um, said no. But she. They weren't letting anyone do meet and greets. Like at the concert. Who's Travis Kelsey? He was. He's a football player on the Philadelphia eagles oh wow look at you know i yeah, think i saw period. it on twitter i think people were like she needs an athlete era like Absolutely. she needs that I'm yeah always said, like i'm very pro her i don't think she needs to date a musician again no no actor too like it hasn't worked out we have, right yeah we either we need an athlete just like a golden retriever like himbo boyfriend who yeah. isn't afraid of like the spotlight yeah didn't jessica simpson marry an athlete right yeah i think he was like a football player, player. oh carrie player. underwood did as well hillary duff i think did a hockey yeah. maybe she should find a hockey player oh my god they yeah. seem to be pretty stable yeah i don't know and i feel like yeah she just needs someone chill someone like not with- but she doesn't need a man she doesn't need a man. But if she wants a man. If she wants a man, which I think she does. But yeah. I mean, yeah. Anyway. I think, again, that's where it goes back to the whole like Snow White thing. And Prince. I think a lot of people are like, it's okay to have both. Who said it? Oh, I think it was Tiana. Someone made a good point. They said that Princess Tiana was able to have both the business. She was running her own like New Orleans like uh, beignet shop. Or no, what was she? Like gumbo shop. Yeah. And she got her man too. I think you can have both. I think you can have both. And I think it's like really nice to have both. As again, someone who's been independent, always relied on myself. It's kind of nice to have a man to um, – just have that, you know, comfort and around. And Let's have it all. Have, Normal is having it, it all. all. You yeah. can have it all. And I yeah. think it's amazing. And I think it's wonderful. And I love Taylor Swift. Final thoughts on Taylor Swift, please. Did we accomplish the goal? I mean, I don't think you had to like convince me. Honestly. I know. Like, I thought I, I was going to have her. more work to do, to be honest. Yeah. But it's about, like you had some history with her. I think as soon as I explained yeah. things, you like really got the fact that the when the Taylor Swift was over party that you would have been on Taylor's side is like the ultimate like once you said that I was like oh like you're gonna end it right here totally yeah I really you guys can try and find it because I know as soon as I say something like someone finds a clip I really don't think I've ever said anything bad about Taylor Swift (laughs) and like that's saying a lot because I mean I had hater periods for sure but like to me there was just nothing to hate on like there's this I didn't know about all this and then with the Kanye stuff to me I I didn't know about the voice memos and the song and all that stuff but like them like you can't hate on Taylor Swift like she was actually just like so sweet and nice and just like up there and you know I don't I don't know I just never thought of her as like canceled it's kind of like Selena Gomez too like there was nothing I don't know again enough about them but there's like nothing to cancel them over like yeah and think people want when the, someone is super successful and like you almost want the downfall so oh. people want to like create the people downfall. build everybody up to tear them down yeah. people love a tear down I feel like that's with everybody creators singers actors like you build someone up so much and then they just love the downfall yeah and I'm just like that's why I like don't care to be like super famous anymore or anything like that because it's like I know that like how people are they just want to see you like 
fall at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So I don't buy into any of it. I'm just like, mm, I'm here. That's it. You're very swifty coated without even knowing it. I love it. Swifty coated? Yeah. Is that like color coded? <laughs> like your personality is just leans very swifty without like even knowing okay. it. Yeah. I, you I mean, you have the swifty values. You have the swifty ideals. Really even pop. though I hate the term swifty, but I have to like buy it. I like swifty, but I think the swiffer is going to have something to say about it. They're going to be like <laughs> copyright because I think I'm swiffer. <laughs> And I think that's great. I think she should honestly cash in on it. If she, she ends do. up doing it, she better come on the. Oh pod. my god! Could you imagine? I would love to. I'd love to have Taylor Swift on. I would love to have anyone on. So if you are someone who wants to come on the <laughs> Judge Church podcast, no, we have so our first guest next week. I'm very excited about it. Um, and yeah, we might we might keep going with Just Trish. Hopefully, this is our third episode. Hopefully, we're, the fourth episode yeah, airs. We're close. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Knock crossed, on wood. Knock on wood. All of it. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I guess in closing, we'll just say, um, not let me get my shades on real quick here. You need to calm down. To, yes. You need to calm the, down. The, the, what's the words? You need to calm down. You're being too loud. You're being too loud. That's to my haters. If anyone <laughs> wants to hate this, let's hear us. Where's my camera? This is the close up. Like, like uh, if you're here in the live chat and you're hating and we have to block you. You need to calm down. I need to calm down. <laughs> you're being too loud. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Is period still a thing? I love no, that you still do that. I know. I still do that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Taylor Swift, we absolutely love you. Congrats on selling out in LA. Like, what? how? That's amazing. You're beautiful. I don't think you should have ever been a victim. Like, I don't think Taylor Swift should ever be canceled. Like, that is like an angel. There's literally nothing wrong. Even discussing her cancellation, I'm like, this, this, she should not have been canceled. For what? For being like, okay, this is funny. I get, like, what? Like, don't cancel Taylor Swift. Like, if you want to cancel Taylor Swift, like, there's something seriously wrong with you. Because even the world's number one hater at one point me, the number one troll, number one hater, the number one jealousy person of everybody. I never even had a bad thing to say about Taylor Swift, so you don't need to have a bad thing to say about Taylor Swift. We love Taylor. We are Swifties. We love Swiffer. Honestly, I do use it. If you want to sponsor, let us know. We love Oscar, who is just amazing. The brains of this operation. <laughs> Moses, the most loyal, wonderful husband ever. I wish him Moses for everyone. I wish I could duplicate him and give him to Taylor Swift, but not today. Not even in the future. And you guys are watching Just Trish, where it's just me, because because that's it. That's all we get. And otherwise, we wouldn't have a fourth episode. So here's to three episodes and hopefully a fourth. Woo. You have watched Just Trish. Woo. <laughs> I hope I look skinny from this angle. Because I've been seeing like this the whole time. 